That's ten thousand dollars, Connor. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Yeah! 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 This show is not for sharpshooters. This show is a fucking machine gun. There's no chewy center to the show. It's all hard candy. This show is not a sniper on a fucking roof. This show is a drone taking out a village. Do not invite me into your house because I will come in and I will read fucking happy. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast. Folks, happy Thanksgiving. That's right. Ah! I dropped that right in your lap because today is Thanksgiving. I'm assuming you're listening today. You're listening on Thursday because who wants to spend time with their family? Nobody, right? Uh, And so you know what I did? I alienated my family, so they left me. So I'm not spending the day with anyone. I am solo today. You know what I'm doing? Laundry. And uh, I may buy a slice of pie from somewhere. Folks, I'm a lonely man. I won't lie. I I don't know what I'm doing today. Although I, I can tell you right now, I know what you're doing. Listening to this show right now in your home. You've got your earbuds cranked in while you're sitting around dinner with your family. You're sitting at the kids' table, perhaps. Oh my God, what happened to your elbow? You got a weird elbow right now. Oh, I'm sorry. It was like what? it looked weird. It looked it's like it's all red. It's got a big red dot. And it's got a, like a knob on it. Like oh, okay. So it a... Ooh, <laughs> that because it freaked me out. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. You know why? Because it looked like we cooked your arm and it was done. Uh, maybe it is. And a little, little timer pop out, like a little uh, well, which is appropriate because it is Thanksgiving. Your little turkey timer on your arm popped out right out of your elbow. Wow, someone just grabbed their nipples right in front of me, folks, and it was not a clown who lives what here. It was bad? someone. Oh, she's showing me her nipples. All right, good. I'm, I'm not a fan. showing you my nipples. You did, I'm though. That my nipple is poking out my shirt. It's not, I didn't show you my nipples. Well, not today, but I've seen them in the past, and I have them on my no, phone. You have yes, I have. What are you talking about? You did an art gallery. You get naked for everybody. Oh, Basically, you smeared cake all over yourself, and there. yeah, there's a painting of you naked right in front of me. Yeah, so I mean, guess what? I've seen them. Uh, I've seen them with their door knocker <laughs> clappers. It's like, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's here every week. Uh, and and don't think I don't look at the picture and then look at your tits and then look back at the picture and then I because I mean because the tits are naked in the photo and then I see you with a shirt on but I'm like well I can kind of see the same thing happening I like and I've seen them naked anyway and like I said I got a photo on my phone so I mean uh, it just that's the way it works. I took a photo of you at that art gallery oh thing when you you put your arms up in the oh, air and it's like right. everything. I took my top off. I was a little yes, you did, and uh, and so everyone took photos. And uh, now I have a photo on my phone of you and your breasts. And what, you what if it was just, no, hold on, you and your breasts? No, it's a photo of you. Your breasts are, are, of course, in every photo that you take, right? I mean, it's just, it sounds silly to say you and your breasts. Yeah, uh, no, not when I take those photos. Why haven't you gotten rid of that? That just seems weird. See, we're in dangerous territory right now because I'm telling <laughs> Lily all about her, uh, her breasts and photos and things like that. And, uh, and I know inevitably she's going to come back with, uh, you don't want that because here's why. Because that's what she just did. We were sitting here and she was on the computer and she's working on Facebook. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. And uh, and she is barefoot. Lily is barefoot. And I'll be honest with you, folks, I'm a fan of the uh, the female body. I'm a fan of all of the parts of the female body. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i a fan of feet. I, do, I like them. All right? I will say that. I won't lie. I have jammed them into my mouth on many occasions now. Not Lily's, of course. Um, but she was sitting here, and she was working on the computer, and I happened to glance down, and I, her feet are very attractive. And so I said, uh, you know, you should do foot modeling. Because we're sitting here talking about how we're both poor and we have no money. And uh, she just goes, I just go, you should do some foot modeling. And she goes, oh, no, I shouldn't. Here's why. And gives me like 30 reasons why she shouldn't do foot modeling. And I went, oh, okay, then I guess you shouldn't do it because... <laughs> And she's like, no, I mean, I just can't do that because here's why. And she just like, this litany of reasons. She pulled out a scroll and unrolled it as if she had thought of this before I even showed up. And she was sitting around going, what can I do? I can do foot modeling. No, wait, I can't. And then she took a feather pen and she wrote it all down on a scroll and wrapped it up and then used a special wax to bond it. Remember last week? Ha <laughs> ha, let's talk about that. Um, so, yeah, so she told me that. So I guess, guess what, folks? Lily won't be doing any foot modeling. And there's 30 reasons why. Go to BuzzFeed. They're, they're listening right now at BuzzFeed.com. The 30 reasons Lily Von Stupp will not do foot modeling. Go ahead and check them out, folks. Uh, written by Lily Von Stupp uh, herself as uh, she was posing for a naked photo and writing these this list. Um, yeah, folks. So, yeah, that happened. So I, I tried to compliment Lily. I tried to give her a thing. And then sure enough, all of a sudden it was just it was thrown back in my face. It was just totally scorned and flipped back right into my, my grill. Um. It was thrown at me like a frozen water balloon on a train. Um, 
All right. So, folks, hi. Merry Christmas. No, not Merry Christmas. It's not Merry Christmas yet. It's Happy Thanksgiving. Although you you could be, you know what? It would be hard pressed to tell the difference if you go into a Walgreens these days, folks, because you walk in and there's five dudes from the Nutcracker and a small little gold tree and 47 Armenians buying cools. And it's like, good for you guys. I don't know what that has to do with the season, but I guess, you know what, menthol. That's what it is. It's they, it's they want to bring wet, winter into their lungs. That's what they want to do because they live in America. They're like, oh, it's not so cold here in California. I'm going to bring winter into my lungs. I'm going to introduce a winter wonderland right into my cili. Cili. Is that what, what are those called? Cilia. Cilia. Uh, no, Armenians call it the cili. Actually, the guy gave me the cilia. I go, why are you smoking guys' cools? And he gave me the silly eye. I said, wait a second. You can't be giving me the Armenian silly eye. That's a curse I can't break, God damn it. Uh, and then, of course, they all danced in a circle and made me hummus. All right, so. Uh, that's not racist at all. They're, they were, they're, look, they represent their race very well. Is Armenian a race? I don't think it is. If it is, I lost it. I ran it, and I lost it. That is a race that I lost, folks. I will not lie. I ran in the Armenian race, and I lost uh, and I, I just, I, cause I, and at the end I just, I gorged myself on shish to wook. That's what I did. Oh my God. I shoved it down my throat. God damn. I love it. I love a throat full of shish to wook folks. <laughs> uh, you know what I will not shove down my throat? Lily's feet. Because apparently I'm not supposed to. And here's 41 reasons why. 41 reasons why Lily's feet are not allowed in Mike's mouth. Uh, 41 seems high. I will not lie. 41 seems very high. When five would probably do. I, I honestly, I think one reason not to put Lily's foot in my mouth would actually be enough, but she went with 41. She said, you know, she went with 41, but her daddy still calls her baby. And all the folks around town here think she's crazy. All right. Um, Keep going. I love that song. Really? Yeah. Suitcase in her hand. All right. So that's Delta Dawn. What's that flower you have on? Could it be a faded rose from days gone by? Did I hear you say he was meeting you here today to take you to his mansion in the sky? That's a, what's, what year is that? 65? That's got to be the oldest song ever. I, that, that may be the oldest song I've done on here. I don't know. Because I think we all know I do a song every week, folks. That's, that's the best part of my variety show. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I break into a song. All of you are just like, oh my gosh, I recognize that song. And, uh, but I've Delta Dawn. Nobody knows Delta Dawn at all. I'm going to guess 72. That's my guess. Look at it. All right, I'm going to guess 1972. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, folks. By the way, this is the Thanksgiving show. Bingo! Who the fuck wants some, baby? That's right. You're dirt, dirt. All right, uh, 72. I was five, goddammit, and I know the chorus. I know the words. Uh, how do I know the words? How do I know the chorus? I don't know, folks. Yeah, I'm a, it's, I'm, a, it's a haunting song. And you can't it is. It. It's, almost, uh, you know, it's almost as haunting as Angie, baby. Doesn't she like trap a guy in a room and fuck him and then she, he hides in a radio? What the fuck is that story about? Like she steals a guy and he's a ghost? Jackie Baby? Angie Baby? No, Jackie Blue is the Ozark Martin Daredevils. Yeah, but uh, Angie Baby is Helen Reddy, right? And it's uh, and it's like she's a monster. She's really creepy and then a dude rapes her and then she kidnaps him and keeps him in a room as a sex slave. But he lives in a radio. Uh, and then she's insane. That's the thing at the end. God, dude, the 70s with the storytelling songs were awesome. That's what, you know what? Fuck it. That's what the interlude has to be this year. We have to do like a storytelling song, like uh, like the night the lights went out in Georgia. God damn it. Or no, what was the, oh, what's the other one song? Yeah, no, like the night the lights, the lights went out in Georgia. Out in Georgia. Yeah. Is that Vicki Lawrence? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I do too, because I have a 70s box set and it came through with all of them. You know, and the fucking record, the Edmund Fitzgerald, I gotta admit, I was in the car the other day and I was listening to the record of the Edmund Fitzgerald and I'm going, I was doing words from the podcast like in it to go, this could be a funny interlude if we did fucking record the Edmund Fitzgerald because 2013 has been such a fucking bust, like my marriage ended and fucking everything went to hell. And I'm like, dude, we, you know, the wreck of the fucking Schmitty Fitzgerald and he just do a fucking whole thing about how this year was terrible. But then it was a strong rally because the end of the year is great. Uh, I think. Is it? I don't know. Maybe it isn't. You made a face there like it wasn't. You scared the hell out of me. Do me a favor. Jam a foot in my mouth. I'm talking too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't. I have 41 reasons why. Can't be mine. <laughs> find a foot. Let's find a foot somewhere in this I building. Fake one somewhere. No, no. It can't be fake. It's got to be warm. I All right. Put it in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Grim. No, because there has to be. No, because then the stuff that I would do to it has to elicit a response. I can't just fucking work my magic on a fake foot because then nobody's going to care. But if I work my magic on a real foot, then you get some response and it's like, all right, here we go. And then all of a sudden, we're taking photos. That's what we're doing. We're taking photos, folks, with our phone. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second, folks. Uh, last week's show, uh, other than being my favorite show I've ever done in my life, <laughs> seemed to strike a nerve with people, yeah. folks. Uh, I had fun. Well, first of all, you know, before I get to that, let's talk about Madonna. Now, here's the thing. What? Uh, haha, see, you want to hear the Madonna story still, and I will not tell you. Um, it's not a good story. It's pointless. But, uh, 
Last week, folks, as you know, I went ahead and I talked about some stuff that might have been uh, classified as not safe for work. I guess we'll call it that. <laughs> unless, unless your job is my job. In which case, it was completely safe for work. Not only the story, but the actual act itself was very... Because I was at work when it happened. I just happened to not be at my office. Uh, believe me, you, and you guys have paid to see me in my office. If, I, if you Look, if you paid to see me in my office and I actually went ahead with that... Uh, see... All right, let's think about that for a second. Could I? You guys are really cool to me, and you let me do a lot of weird shit on stage. Would you let me do that? Probably not, right? I mean, I couldn't get away with that. That would be super indulgent. If I jerked off and took a bunch of photos with people on, because like, that just crosses over from live performance into uh, sex crime at that point, right? Isn't it? Uh, I mean, I, look, I'll throw it out there to the universe. Well, depend, Well, it depends on if you're in the front row or not. <laughs> if you're in the front row, it can be a sex crime. Uh, and I'm on the hook for dry cleaning. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. We couldn't do that. I couldn't do that live. But uh, I will tell you that there's some people out there among you, the hardy, the hardened, the bold and the brave, who heard last week's show and uh, stepped to the forefront. And uh, well, some, some of you were horrified. I will tell you that. Some of you wrote emails telling me that. Uh, uh, and there was, this was, there was the variation of a theme here, folks. I got this from uh, a ton of you, actually. Some of you just put it on Facebook, but some of you actually wrote it in an email. And it was, tell a story, dot, 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 just not that story. <laughs> And, uh, and I respect you, and I understand what you're saying. However, I will also tell you that you are completely wrong, because that is clearly the story to tell. If anything, I should tell that story every goddamn week, because it was awesome and fun for me to tell. It was not so good for you to listen to. Absolutely not. It was the castor oil of stories. It was rough going down, but afterwards we all felt much better, didn't we? I think we did. Um, I use the royal we, as I speak for all of you out there. Oh, my God. But there are some among you folks who stepped to the forefront who were not, not only not horrified by said story, but perhaps intrigued by said story. There are some among you out there, folks, who I would, I would dare say were perhaps too intrigued by said story. Uh, folks, there are eight of you out there. Eight of you. Eight. And eight is enough. <laughs> eight of you who wrote me and, uh, and actually told me that they wanted the photo. They actually want photo number 31 sent to them. Uh, that would be six women and two guys who uh, said they want the photo. Now, Lily, is, she's uh, curling up into a fetal position because she cannot believe that that is the case. Um, but it is true. I had eight total people who said, uh, it, like, and some people were adamant. Some people, were, I, some people may have been joking. And then there was a thing on the Facebook on the Westside 86 Jokers page. People were like, oh, dude, if you're the 7th member, you totally have to, you, got, you want photo number 31, oh don't God, you? That's right. Yeah, that's what, oh, so people were like that. There. Yeah. Well, speaking of loopholes, let's talk about this loophole real quick. The West Side 86 Jokers page, uh, it's run by our good friend Adam, and admins are myself and my friend Lily Von Strupp, and just the other day I made David Hernandez an admin, and then he went and he made an amazing photo for the page. Good for him, because I didn't know he wasn't an admin, I thought he was. Uh, but I said last week that the first person, the 700th member, could ask for whatever they wanted, and they would get it. So uh, all of a sudden I went in, and before like the morning, there was a 700th member, and it was a person by the name of Paula Deal. All right. Hi, Paula. How are you? Hi, Paula. You are the 700th member of the fan club. Uh, and then I get a note, an email of such, from a gentleman on Facebook, who I won't say his name. His name is Brian, but I won't say his last name. His name is Brian Brian. <laughs> um, and it said, uh, hey, just letting you know that I accepted the 700th member this morning. I went ahead and added her. Uh, and, and full disclosure, it's my wife. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. And uh, I don't know where fucking Brian got the power to add people to the fan club. I didn't think he was an admin. I don't, I don't know if he is or he isn't. I don't know what Facebook is doing. I don't know what Mark Zuckerberg has decided to do. And he's, he's given the power to the people and he's stripped it away from the proletariat, who is myself and Lily and David and Adam. But uh, but Brian added his own wife as the 700th member. And in my head, I was just like, well, that, that key sign, uh, that seems, that doesn't seem fair, really. Um, so I, so I, so I haven't written Brian back and I haven't written what you guys, are you? Here's what happened. All right. The way the fan club is set up, any member can add a member, but okay. the admin has to approve it before they become a member. Well, I changed it to that once Brian did what he did because it was the other one. Because I went in right away and I was like, wait a minute, why did he get to add them? I didn't think anybody could just add somebody. Uh, because I always get requests all the time. This person wants to join. This person wants to join. And so then I have to say yes. 
Um, but the other listing was anyone could, any member can add someone at any time. Yeah, that's not good. Right. Uh, I mean, I guess it's good because it grows the fan club. Um, but also, I don't want people who don't want to be in the fan club being added willy-nilly yeah. uh, by our admin willy-nilly, who I, I probably shouldn't have made him an admin, quite frankly, willy-nilly. He has no fucking uh, filter on what he does. He just goes ahead and he adds people uh, ad, ad hominem. <laughs> Sorry, having fun. Um, that's fun with language. Uh, so, so here's the thing. Uh, Paula still is the 700th member, I guess, so I have to kind of, I, I'll give her a download set or whatever, because I, I got to write her and find out exactly what she wanted. Um, Not to be there? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know why, because Paula didn't ask, Brian just added her, but I don't, you know what I mean? That's. No, I'm sorry, Brian. We're nixing this. You don't get to do that. Well, Brian, uh, Brian seems like a decent fella. He's a decent fella. That's not how it works. I didn't think so, but it, it, it kind of threw me off. And, and also, I will be honest with you, there's a reason I haven't dealt with this. I've had kind of a whirlwind week, folks. Uh, you know, so I haven't been able to really sit down and um, pay attention to this because last week was a bit crazy. And then uh, it's, uh, once my crazy week ended, it went right back into... Are you playing Tetris? What just flashed in your glasses? Something fell from like the ceiling. I, like, no, I moved the window from one to the other. Oh, okay. Because uh, I can see in her glasses, the the screen is reflected and it looked like Tetris. And I was like, if you're playing Tetris during this, that's I I don't even know what to do at that point. <laughs> um, it sounds like fun, though. You're gonna put it, why not pull it up? Let's. You know what? What if we did that? What if I just live tweeted your Tetris? I live podcasted your Tetris. <laughs> red, 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 blue, blue, red, yellow. Is that how it works? No, that's Simon. <laughs> what if I live bro broadcast your Simon? Um, I like tea and cakes for tea and tea time. That's how Stewie remembers Simon. It's one of my favorite scenes ever in Family Guy. Um, all right, Simon, do your worst. All right, shut up. Uh, so, folks, yeah, so, um, I, so I have to figure out the 700th member and who it was, and I will contact that person and, and tell them what, you know, what they can have or whatever. But wasn't there another rule? Didn't I say that if you were the 700th person, didn't you have to put on the wall, I'm the 700th person, and here's what I like about the show? Like, wasn't there a thing? No, no. Okay. We need to I didn't listen. <laughs> we can't void it. Then I'm a dick. I, I made an offer to people, and I, you know, we got like twenty people who signed up, which you was really nice. Uh, well, no, he added he added Paula, who was seven hundred, and then yeah, but it... I'll have to look. I'll have to look and see. My point is, I, I don't think I've forgotten it, folks. It's just that things got a little out of hand, and then I, I honestly, all the steam went out of it for me when when Brian was like, "Yeah, I went ahead and added the seven hundredth person." I'm like, "Who are you? Like, why do you get to do it? I want to do it. That's the whole point. I'm the guy. I'm number seven hundred. I'm well, I'm not I'm not number seven hundred. What if I added myself? You know what? I did. I added myself. I'm the seven hundredth member. I like full disclosure. It's my wife. Yeah. The, I'm sorry. Relatives don't count either. I don't know anything, and 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 Paula has never heard of me. She has no idea who I am. I'm 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 Brian's stupid friend who lives on the internet, and and may have gotten him something for free. I don't know. I don't know what the thing is, because there's no way Paula likes me or the show, right? Because because uh, very rarely does anyone with a vagina cross my path and go, "This is a great show." I mean, it, it doesn't happen. Uh, that's a lie. I have so many female listeners. It's amazing. People I, love I me. I know of at least six. Six? <laughs> 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 Got to get them that photo. So then someone's like, dude, are you going to send them that photo? No, I'm not going to send out that photo. Absolutely not. Because then the, the first thing Lily said was, how many of them did you send it to? And I said, none. And she's like, why not? And, and here's why. There's a couple of reasons. One of them is. I heard it's a great photo. It really <laughs> is. Hand to God. I don't understand why you wouldn't publish that to the world. Well, here's why. Uh, because, first of all, if I send it, yeah. all right, it's never going to live up to the description. Never at all. And the way I described it last week. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. <laughs> that was my pants. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they even heard the zipper on there, but if they did. Well, let's talk about that for just a second, too, because then I said to Lily, Lily's like, she's like, we got to think of a funny thing to do. And she goes, you know what? She goes, why don't we just put like a black bar over it and you can send it to everybody? I said, great. Who's going to put the black bar over it? She goes, I will. I said, so then I have to send you a photo of my cock. And she goes, I've seen a bunch of cocks. <laughs> So all of a sudden now she's like, you know, Morgan Freeman in Shawshank. Like, she's the oldest person on the block who's just like, nah, I've seen a ton of cocks. Who cares? And I said, yeah, weird dynamic. She goes, I've seen my, I've seen big cocks. I've seen small cocks. I've seen friends' cocks. I got three cocks on my phone now that don't belong to Eddie. <laughs> and I said, great. But I have to sit across from you every Wednesday and look you in the face and your nude painting yeah, in the face. What's the big deal? I'm nude in that photo. I'm completely nude. 
we we had this discussion once before about my cock and it was like it was like we had a thing and then she was just like well let me see and i was just like look if he comes out he comes out for business i mean literally he is not he doesn't come out to visit anybody but i think the fo- i think we should just put a black bar over its eyes and <laughs> Well then, how would you know you have not seen it? Does it have to? Hmm. Impressive. Perhaps it does. That's why the shot looks so great. How about if we put a little hat and mustache on it? No, Again, you are presuming a lot of things are not there already. Uh, 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 uh. If you took a picture of yourself masturbating and your penis was wearing a hat and a mustache, I'd want to see that photo badly. Listen, he's worked on the stage. He knows how to dress up for the audience. <laughs> So Lily, but literally she meant it. She's like, yeah, I'll put the black bar over it. I'm like, nah, no, no, that's not happening. For Again, because then I got to send it to you. And also, I'm not putting a black bar over it. It looks fucking awesome. Okay, how about if we send it to Max and have him... Again, now that is a non-starter. <laughs> and have him do an artist rendering. He had no, he could, you know what, he could actually do that? He could just draw like, like me with my hand full of Gumby and him like going, oh, or making a face, or Mr. Bill or something, making an O face. And then like, you know, something shooting out of his head. Honestly, that's the only thing I could think of. Um... Because, you know, I, cause I talked to him about it, and it's like, dude, it is a complete... He didn't even want to hear the story, all right? He was... <laughs> that kind of shit makes Max fucking run and hide, where he's just like, yeah, dude, it was funny, I guess. I don't know. I kind of... I hid in a corner through most of it. Because that guy's known me fucking 35 years. The last thing he wants to hear about is me fucking, you know, naked with my hips thrust in the air, grabbing a handful of cock, and then on the fucking phone, snap, snap, snap. And he's just like... And I'm doing it again. Look at him now. He's turned, he just turned the goddamn show off. Uh Oh, Jesus. You know what would be funny? Like a courtroom photo of it. Like that kind of thing with the weird, the bad jagged lines and stuff like that. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah. So, eight people. Like I said, six six women and two guys said that they wanted the photo. And uh, and I was just, and also, I said to my friend, I'm like, you know, I, I'm not sending it because it could never live up to the description in the show. No matter what I did. Because, again, even if I sent it, they would just, everybody would just be like, nah. You know what I mean? It, it wouldn't matter. Uh, it, even even though it is glorious, I will not I will not lie to you. It is a glory. And, and again, just because of the just because of the actual action caught. I mean, I can't even. I, I whatever. I'll spare you. But uh, oh yeah, I'll spare you. I, like I did last week. Um, oh but also, I, I I told a friend of mine. I'm just like I go, dude. I go sending naked photos of my cock to strangers. Th- that's just like that opens up ten different levels of bad. I mean, I it just you know it just. Because nobody's going to take it and go, well, this is fantastic, and what, put it in their cock chest? I mean, nobody's got that where they just like, can lock up the strain. No. Yeah, you do, but these other people, again, no, well, seven, all right. Seven, eight people have spank banks that they would like to add your photo to. Yes, or, but matter. until I do something that they don't like on this show, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, guess what? And then the photo goes public, and then everybody's like, oh, my God. And again, like, I don't really care. What the fuck do oh I care? God. There's no publicity and nobody cares. I get That's it. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Nobody cares if your penis is on the internet. Eight people care. Yeah, but I'm saying nobody's going to be like, oh my God, did you see Mike's penis is on the internet? Eh, I might care. And also, look, I'm no great shakes in that department. I've talked about it on here before. All, I do all my best work from the neck up and that's fine. <laughs> So that's the thing is I don't need that myth to just be confirmed and everybody's just like, oh, yeah, he wasn't lying. You know what I mean? It would be terrible. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't need visual proof of that out there. I just – I'm honest about it and I tell you what I got and that's fine and everybody can all imagine that. Good. Good for you. Take that to heart. Not everybody – and not everybody's going to imagine it, but eight people can. But it was just – and it wasn't even about oh, – what the fuck? Who cares? So the bottom line is eight people asked and they're, they're, nobody's getting it. It's not happening. However, there are naked photos of Lily that I'd be happy to send to you folks. <laughs> See? Now, oh, okay, now you don't want to. My photo's on the web. I've told people where to see it. I don't care. Where? Where do we, where do we see it? If they go to, is it Azul Sind or is it his... Uh, Are you doing, is that the painting? Yeah. Well, the painting, uh, no one cares about the painting. We want to see you, like, regular naked photos of you. As opposed to what? An irregular naked photo of me? Listen, this is a painting. It's an artist's rendering of you. I, I demand that we see nude photos of you on the internet. Let, let's just do that. You know what? Max, send us some photos. Let's all three of us just put naked photos on the website. It'll be a new page on MikeSchmidtComedy.com. I don't think he would be in that. I don't know. Why not? Um, but, well, I, I don't, actually, I don't want him to because then it's like nobody's going to look at me at all. They're going to look at Dave. That's a good-looking fella. And who's that guy? Oh, my Christ. I'm just the host. <laughs> I have the server space. That's it. That's all I have. <laughs> Uh, see people tune in for that nude pictures of you and Max and then I could just be like they're in a suit and a cigarette like Rod Serling at Night Gallery maybe <laughs> I don't know um, yeah so so people asked people wanted the photo but it's not going anywhere I won't be sending it 
but uh, and I have not answered them yet either. Like I said, these people are very nice, and they wrote me and they said they wanted it. But uh, I, I, because I, I didn't know what to write back right away. Because again, they could just be kidding, and uh, and so then I write back and I'm like, look, I understand your interest and I appreciate it, but I'm not. And they're gonna be like, hey, dumb fuck, I didn't really want your fucking naked photo. I was joking. We were having fun, ha ha. But apparently, you thought it was serious, uh, and I don't want that to be the case with people. Um, Mainly because I don't want to have to print out a form letter that I have to mail to people and say, look, I appreciate your interest in my nude photo, but unfortunately I will not be able to. I, I, well, I should do that. You know what? Actually, bullshit. I should do that. I should have a fucking form letter that I can send out to everybody. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Send it right to them. Send. I'll send it like the next day air. <laughs> that's, that's, oh my God. Yeah, send me your fax numbers, folks. Anybody who sends me their fax number will get a fun thing faxed to them. That's a lie. That is an absolute lie. Has anything fun ever been faxed? No, I don't think so. <laughs> You got a 3D printer? I'll send you the photo. <laughs> Watch your eyes. Um, yeah, so there you go, folks. That's it. That's the fun we were having this week, as I heard from all these people who were like, hey, I want that. And no, you don't. Um, but it still exists. We'll see. I mean, you know what? I mean, maybe I will give it to you. You know what? I'm going to give it to you. And you go ahead and do whatever. You put a black box on it or something and just try to make it appropriate for Facebook. Can you do that? All right, good. Um, cause again, I know David doesn't want it. He wants no part of it. <laughs> he didn't even want to hear the fucking story. Um, so, but you will, you, I, I trust you. Uh, again, please don't let it get lost in the shuffle of all the other cock photos you have on your phone though, please. That would be. Don't text it to me, email it. All right. I will email it. That will make, I, again, I will, I will fax it to you. How about that? Let's just go ahead and fax it. I'll fax it over. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so it was a crazy week for me, and that's one of the reasons I, you know, I've been able to answer emails. And that look, I, all right, I don't answer any emails ever. It's like it's been a crazy two years. Yes, I, I'm, I'm way behind in my correspondence. I'm woefully behind, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, but last week, as some of you may know, uh, I was busy on Thursday, the Thursday after the show, the Thursday you heard the show, uh, because I, folks, was uh, in Culver City, California, on set at Wheel of Fortune which is a game show that is uh, on in America and abroad, and it's on six nights a week. Uh, and, and all of you are very nice, and you're asking me for updates and things like that, and please recognize that uh, my non-disclosure agreement still holds. Uh, I am unable to tell you any details of the show or any uh, anything that had happened. I will, I'm debating, all right, here's one I will, all right, should I, I mean, I can tell you one thing. I can tell you the air date. So you can stop taping shit. And, and er erasing it when I'm not on there. Um, but I saw people speculating. They're like, oh, my God. Well, it's, you know, it's eight months later or six months later. Here is when my show airs, folks. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. My Wheel of Fortune airs Christmas night. Really? Christmas night. Wow. How ridiculous is that? Uh, when we were there and they told us that was going to be the case. Uh, I, 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 and I just, in my head, I was like, that's awesome. I mean, that's really kind of cool. Um, because, you know, that's when America gathers together and watches Wheel of Fortune as a nation together. They all just sit in front of their television sets and they text one another like, are you watching this? Uh, so that will be the night when the ratings will go through the roof and everyone will see me on Wheel of Fortune doing whatever it is that I did. But, uh, but I can tell you that I did participate in a taping of the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I showed up on Thursday real early, like 7.15 a.m., and uh, then they grabbed me and they brought me into the coldest studio known to man. Everybody says Letterman Studio is freezing cold. I don't think Letterman's got anything on say, Jack, because this is the fucking coldest studio I've ever been in in my life. And folks, I've been in some television studios. Um, but I walked in and I saw the pool of contestants and then they wound up doing the thing where they put us all and they matched us up. I, I can't go into it, folks. I can't say anything. All I can tell you is that my show will air on Christmas night. Now, here's something interesting. Christmas night is a Wednesday. So uh, here's how it's going to work. You're going to watch the show Christmas night, and then Thursday, I'm going to tell you all the stuff that happened. <laughs> Not that you're going to need to know at that point, because you will have seen it occur uh, on, on Christmas night. But, and, and also, they may bump it, but it could be some sort of bumping. If the terrorists win on Christmas and something happens, <laughs> if Jesus himself comes back, they may have to shuffle their, their programming lineup, folks. Uh, and, uh, you know, let me throw this into the ether right now. Because, you know, they speak to the universe and things will come true. Jesus, don't fucking come back this Christmas. Uh, this is my time. That night, it's your birthday in the daytime. And then that night, it's my time. All right? Because I'm on Wheel of Fortune, for fuck's sake. And people have been waiting to see it. So, Jesus, hold your horses and come back on the 26th. Uh, well, well, Jesus has not been hurt. He's not going to come back in a chariot of horses. He doesn't have to hold his horses, right? How is Jesus going to come back? He's got to come back. Is he going to come back 
like in the robes and looking like Jesus and with a on a white horse? Or is he going to come back like us? Is he going to be all dressed up like in a snazzy suit? I don't know. I can't figure it out, folks. Uh, your phone is going off. You can answer that. Something important. Perhaps that's the Pope telling us all about Jesus and how he's going to come back. Perhaps it's the Pope giving another speech about uh, why capitalism is tyranny. And then he goes back and he swims in his Scrooge McDuck Pope fucking pool full of gold. All right. So, um, I don't know. Wow. Well, seriously, because, again, this week, dude, people are fickle, all right, because the Pope comes out, and uh, he's still the Pope, all right, so he's in charge of uh, the largest cult in the world, and he's telling you not to have sex without a condom and, and all that, but he's also kind of nice in his speeches, so everybody's like, yeah, yeah I kind of like this Pope. Well, yeah, but he's still, I mean, you know, we all thought that Don Corleone was cute with the orange in his mouth in the garden, but he was still getting people killed in the background, all right? <laughs> So you don't think that the Catholic Church finally went, you know what, we need a guy that everybody's going to like, some guy that they're going to dig. And so then he becomes the Pope and he goes out and he, you know, what did he, he put his hands on some leper the other day and then he kissed a guy who was sick. He does all that shit. That's, that's the thing. He's, he's the Pope who's taking a bullet. This is the Pope who's taking a bullet for all the other Catholics. And then he still lives in a rape house. So Jesus Christ, I don't know why you're fucking rallying behind this dude. He gives a speech and everybody's like, yay, this, this Pope gets it. No, he doesn't get it. You know who gets it? The altar boys get it every fucking Thursday and Friday. <laughs> And then the Pope does his speech, everybody claps in fucking Basilica Square, and then he turns on a popey heel, and he goes down and he jumps into his Scrooge McDuck pool full of fucking gold doubloons from the fucking 1700s that the Catholics have had forever in the basement of the Vatican, or the 1600s, or the 1500s, or the 1400s, or maybe he goes downstairs and he fucking tortures somebody on the rack. Didn't they do that? Didn't they have the fucking Spanish Inquisition hiding somewhere in the basement? I, I got no fucking idea. Look, I don't know anything about anything. All I know is this Pope, this, let's take him with a grain of wafer. All right, can we do that? Let's just take him with a grain of wafer, all the cool things that he says, and let's keep him at fucking miter's length, because I'm not ready to trust these motherfuckers just yet. And I know they're not asking me to, by the way but let's talk about that it's not like they're like oh my god we've got to win over the podcasters that's what we need to do that's the grassroots effort let this pope go out there and be fucking cool and then the podcasters will be on board and next thing you know the pope is part of the earwolf network oh my god it's amazing because that's where the youth is and that's how we get the youth back we reach them through podcasts and rape them they should put out a you know what they should just have a raping the youth podcast oh my why not Oh my, was George Takai going to host that? What was that all about? Uh, all right, so, folks, happy Thanksgiving. Now, uh, <laughs> so it's, why am I talking about the Pope? I got to go into the Pope thing. I don't even know why. Because all this week, that's all I keep seeing is everybody's like, oh, this Pope, this Pope seems like a decent guy. Um, but he's still, still, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Hitler told somebody they looked nice once. I'm sure he did. I'm sure Hitler had, had one day where he was really friendly. And everybody like, you know what? This Hitler's guy is not such a bad dude. And then the fucking zero started flipping over in the death count. Oh my. All right. Not that the Vatican is operating a complicated system of trains that will bring a certain minority group to their death. I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not saying that that's happening at all yet. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that if the Catholics wanted to do that, they certainly have the money to buy the railroads. <laughs> Although I don't know if that's a good negotiation. If you went and said, we will buy all of your railroads because we want to send a certain minority group to certain death. Uh, I don't know if that's the strongest negotiating point right from the jump. <laughs> as much as the, the railroad people want your money, I don't know if you come out with that as your first reason. If you say, well, we'd like to get from place to place easier and we like choo-choos, maybe that works a lot better. <laughs> We like choo-choos. Why do you... Listen, Vatican, why do you want to buy all of the trains on Earth? We like choo-choos. All right, done. You don't say, we would like to exterminate people from Guam. You don't, you don't do that. They want... Look, the Catholics hate Guam. They always have. They do. They hate anything with a G, a G and a U in it. They hate guavas. They hate dengue fever. <laughs> that's all I had. That's, all, that's the two that popped into my head. Guavas, Guam, and Dengue Fever. That's actually three. That's not bad. That's not bad in an instant to come up with a lot of GUs. Uh, they hate GUI interfaces. They don't like that at all. Actually, I, the I in GUI is interface. I didn't even need to say it. A GUI, so it's a, a GUI interface? No, it's, it's GUI. That's all it is, right? You know, you're the computer person. You're smart. You handle all my business with GoDaddy.com. Um... <laughs> It's a volume. It's an incredible volume of business. Well, I do have two different websites. Um, well, I actually have two web domains. Do, do, domains. 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 
Uh, all right. So that's what the Catholics hate. They hate the GU people. Um, they hate gum. I think that goes without saying. Uh, you know what else they hated? Forrest Gump. Could not stand it. <laughs> uh, they showed it at Vatican movie night. And, uh, and when it came on the screen, everybody booed and threw their sodas at it like it was Flounder's picture at Animal House. Oh, my God. The, the College of Cardinals gets together for a movie night every Friday. And uh, whenever you see the puffs of black smoke when they're electing a pope, that's them burning Prince of Forrest Gump. <laughs> that's how much they hated that movie. They bought him all the prints and they fucking burn him. That's how they elect a pope. Oh <laughs> all right. Uh, that made me laugh. God damn it. That was stupid. I like stupid. Stupid's fun. Um... And that brings me back to Christmas. Now, folks, uh, we will all gather around. Part of me is wondering if I should have a viewing party for that. Literally, because I, I know because uh, there were there were people who were actually talking about coming to California to watch it, um, which which seemed weird. Like, would they all come to my house, or would we have to go? <laughs> would we get a hotel room and watch it in a hotel room? I think these people just want you know they just want to get a, their hands on my phone and crack the code and see the photos. That's what they want to see. This is all a big fucking rigmarole. Um. I don't know. So, so like part of me was like, dude, it'd be hysterical if you had a thing and you watched it with like listeners. Like we had a contest, but then a contest. Like I just want to watch it with people, but I don't. I just want to sit in my house and watch it. I don't know what the fuck I want to do. I don't even want it to air. But wait, I do. I want it to air all over the place. I want it to be fucking just trumpeted from the highest mountain. Um, although there's no reception up there. You can't show it on the highest mountain. <laughs> just me and four sheep and a blank TV with a bunch of snow on it. I can't watch it up there. I got to watch it in my house, my apartment. I have an apartment. I don't have a house. Maybe I'll have a house by then. You don't know how I did. Um, so, you know, cause they're giving away houses on Wheel of Fortune all the time. Um, regardless folks, the bottom line is it airs on Christmas night. Uh, so gather your grandmothers around and have them say, that's the, that's my friend from the internet. Look at him. Um, I will tell you this folks. Um, I can't look, I can't tell you a lot about the show, but I will tell you this. Um, I am one of the three contestants on that show on the Wheel of Fortune Christmas night. There are five main people on the show. There is Pat Sajak, there is Vanna White, and then three contestants. I'm one of the three contestants. <laughs> I will tell you this. I am not Vanna White. What? I am not. I know you make it confused. Uh, I will tell you this. They, I brought five shirts. They picked the shirt I didn't want to wear. Why did you bring it then? Because I had to give them choices. Why did you bring that shirt then? Why because I don't have a lot of nice shirts because I'm a fat idiot who's Why lost a ton of weight. Why did you bring four shirts and not take that shirt? All right, I was getting to that, but you're going to yell at me about it. I'm just like, why would you take a shirt you don't want to wear? Well, because I don't mind it, but it was, the, it was my fourth choice out of the four. Here's why. Because they have a rule. You cannot have short sleeves on the Wheel of Fortune. You can't wear short sleeves. So uh, I brought two shirts with short sleeves and two shirts with long sleeves. The only reason I brought the other shirt with long sleeves is because I figured, well, I can't just give them two short sleeves and one long sleeves because that really limits their choices and they like to have choices. So I'll bring this fourth one, which also has long sleeves just in case. And that was the one they chose. And here's the thing. I like the shirt. I don't mind the shirt. The only problem with the shirt is it is uh, it's big now. Like, I mean, it's like because I lost so much weight, it's like crazy baggy. So uh, so it's just it's just draped over me like a like a fucking uh sarong or whatever the fucking thing i wore at the philippine wedding was barong it's a barong philippine wedding. i went to a filipino wedding sunday no not sunday <laughs> <laughs> it was after wheel of fortune we all got together pat said i like you guys and we went as a group the five of us me two contestants vanna and pat hopped into a van and we started surprising filipinos all over the fucking countryside uh, because of the typhoon, well, we were dispensing checks for typhoon relief and also attending their weddings. Because uh, as much as the Catholic Church hates GU, Pat Sajak loves Filipinos. Oh my God, does he love them. <laughs> and he just happened to say, you know what? This is the Christmas show. Why don't we all hop into a van, a sleigh, if you will, and we will go around and just dispense all sorts of weddings to Filipinos. Why don't you come with us? I said, yes. He goes, you know why? Because you're my favorite contestant in the world. I said, of course I am. And he goes, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other two. <laughs> I said, very good, Mr. Sajak. That is so, I, don't that I think a lot of it happened. <laughs> I now, please, folks, don't tell anybody because I have a non-disclosure agreement. I'm not supposed to be telling you all of this. But that didn't happen on the show. Um, yes, it did. It's that a very special Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> 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 we got to talking about the Philippines and the typhoon. And, uh, and he said, you know what? Actually, I'm, a, I'm crazy for the Philippines. And I said, I did not know that about you, Pat Sajak, because it turned out that I started to interview him. <laughs> Normally, he's going to ask us questions. But we said, you know what, Pat? Well, you always ask questions to the contestants. Let's, let's find out a little bit about you. 
And he said, well, I, loved, I am completely enamored with the Philippines, and I'm very worried about what's going on with that typhoon right now. And I said, yes. And he goes, I also love weddings. I said, bam, I've got a barong. Let's put it on and go to one, get in a van and go to some weddings. Uh, that's what it's called, a barong. Because I was in it. Well, I was in a Filipino wedding a long time ago. What are you doing, Sherlock? Um, you were in a Filipino wedding? Yes. In it? Like the wedding party? I stood up in it. Yes. Okay. Yes, I was the, uh, I was the best... <laughs> I think that's technically what I was. I don't I, look. I don't understand the Filipino language, folks. I'm not Pat Sajak. You can't expect me to understand the Filipino language like he does. I think that's what I was technically. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was with my good friend Paul, who's a good friend of mine. I have many Pauls who are my friends, but this is Filipino Paul, of course. Not to be confused with uh, Beat the Geeks Paul and uh, Oh my God, why do I talk to crazy people every week, Paul? Um. <laughs> Hockey playing Paul. That's that guy. Uh, but this is this was my partner on the uh, Ultimate Fan League. And he's a Filipino person, and he married a Filipino woman, and he had me stand up at his wedding, and I wore a barong, which is a, uh, it's a, it's a comfortable, it's a shirt. It's weird. It's like a transparent shirt, but it's a, it's a traditional tribal garb. Not tribal, native garb. They're not oh. tribes. Garb. Yeah. Um, Oh my God. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, so I wore that in a wedding once. And so I happened to have it when Sajak started talking about his love of the Philippines. I go, dude, I got a barong at my house. He goes, done, let's do this. So we hopped into a van, went to my house and I grabbed my barong and then we went and we just dispensed winnings to and fro all over Filipino weddings, all over the Southland. You wore a barong too? Uh, he actually fit into my barong because it's from when I was fat. <laughs> so the two of us hopped in, into the one, bar we were under the cover of one barong. Say Jack and Schmidt, under cover of one barong. <laughs> U-C-O-O-B. Yukub. That's what it was. <laughs> we were under cover of one barong, and we went from wedding to wedding, dispensing winnings and handing out things. And then they would always hand us some sort of pineapple in return, which is nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Filipino people. Uh, and then we cut a large check to uh, the Red Cross so they could go ahead and rebuild the Philippines. And then he and I are guy, we're buying a mansion. We're buying a, a place together out there because, again, we hit it off very well. But please, folks, you cannot talk about this. I have a non-disclosure agreement. So you can't be telling people about my newfound friendship with Pat Sajak or our new house in the Philippines or the fact that we both fit into one barong. Please keep it under your hat. Keep it under your barong, folks. <laughs> keep it under your sari. Do they wear saris in the Philippines? Uh, I don't know. I know they're sorry. The Philippines, a big fucking typhoon hit over there. Those people are very sorry at this point. Uh, but we did everything we could to go over there and do the best we could to dispense some sort of relief. And I think we did just that. And so now if the Philippines recovers, you can thank me and say, Jack, <laughs> under cover of one barong. Um, Holy Christ. Yes. So I can't tell you anything else that happened other than the fact that he and I bonded together over our love of the Philippines and uh, his love of the Philippines. I pretended because he's a famous star. Um, so Christmas night. Uh, or as the Filipinos call it, uh, I think that's actually their word for Christmas. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so go ahead and watch that and, and call me. You know what? Let's do that. Let's make this a contest. Whoever can come up with the, you know, I reach out to our Filipino listeners. If you put together some sort of uh, fest, some sort of feast, not a fest, I throw an A in there. I make it a feast <laughs> and get a pig and jam an apple in its mouth and I'll come over and I'll watch fucking Wheel of Fortune with you. It'll be amazing. And then at eight o'clock, we'll do a celebratory hula. Do people do that? I don't know if the Filipinos do the hula. I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. We'll do some sort of dance. You guys think of it. You got a month. <sighs> Folks, I have to uh, bring this up. <laughs> because uh, all of you seem to strongly feel that I should buy this five-pound Hershey bar that I've heard so much about now. <laughs> Because I happened to see it when I was in Seattle and I talked about it. And then ever since then, I've received emails from people telling me that they have them in their stores and that they should get them and they were going to send them to me. And I'm like, dude, you can't send five pounds through the mail. It's got to be like eight grand. That seems like, well, it seems high. Well, if you want me to get it right away. And why wouldn't you? <laughs> I got to get this fucking five pound handy, handy bar. I need a handy bar. That's what I need. Uh, <laughs> handy bar mustache. Um, but now, but someone put on, on the page that it's like, that it's available at Kmart and it's only $22 and I did the math on that and that actually is the same amount as like if I were to buy um, 10 license plates of chocolate it would be the same price it would be actually be uh, yeah because it's two for $4 at uh, Ralph's they actually, actually lowered the price actually lowered the price two for $4 it was two for five so I walk past that aisle every goddamn time 
But now I just figure, you know, I got, I should just, I got to just eat the five pound one, right? Don't I have to just do it? I just have to go get it and then just eat it in a night. No. That would cure me of it. Ugh. No, it's like when your dad would take you out behind the barn and make you smoke a million cigarettes to cure you. I didn't have a dad. I didn't have a barn. What the fuck am I talking about? I didn't have any of that. Did that ever happen? That's true, right? I saw it in movies, I think. That's what dads did. They took you out behind the barn. Or when they like when you, you kept playing with the stove and they put your hand in the fire. Like They're like, ah. Yeah, they do. That's what you're supposed to do with your kids. Oh, well, that's maybe then it was. But now it's been accepted that that's the thing to do. Bomb Pop and Chinese Rick will learn about fire. <laughs> oh, my China babies. My future China babies, loud as thunder. I can't do David Bowie like David can. All right, so. um, But I have to eat that candy bar. I have to. And it's like, it's only at Kmart. We have one Kmart here. It's by the Grove. I drive by it when I'm Travis barbecuing. What? I have two options? Because I called the one at the Grove. They close at 10. Is that the call you made? Yes. Oh, my God. Because I, cause I just think that this is almost like a challenge. Like, I just have to do it, right? I just It'll just get it out of my system. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. You know what I could do? Oh, dude. How about this? Instead of eating it, what if I melted it? And then I just bathed in it. Because that's a lot. Five pounds. That may be a lot of liquid chocolate, right? But it'll be scalding hot. But I'll have to just temper it. And then I'll just pour it all over me. Oh, my God. It'll be awesome. What are you laughing about? What's wrong? I'm picturing you covered in hot chocolate. And oh. Not no, what are you talking about? That'd be amazing. Oh, my God. Dude. You're going to get people wanting that picture. Nobody wants that picture <laughs> except you. Um, <laughs> yeah. What if I did that, though? Melted. Because five pounds on chocolate, that's got to be like a big-ass Dutch oven of chocolate. And then just climb in the shower and dump it on me? Dude, and I'll go straight up Anne Margaret out of Tommy? Oh, my God. It's awesome. This is a great plan. No. Because then I don't eat it, but I get to luxuriate in it. So it's like I sort of, I used the five pounds, but I didn't eat it. I didn't, so it's like, it's sort of, and you know what? Your skin looks great. Isn't it oily? Like chocolate's all oily. It's good for your skin. You say gross. I disagree. You, what are you talking about? What, you're like, you like nudity and food. This is when, do, when don't you? I don't like nudity and food in that way. I like to eat food while I'm naked. I don't want to sit in it. Well, I'm not sitting in it. I'm not a horrible person. I'm going to splash it. I'm going to pour it all over me. Like, yay. Yeah, that's much better. It's like I won the chocolate Stanley cup. And someone's just going to pour fucking chocolate on me. Yay! But I won't, not somebody, of course. It's going to be just me because it's only me. Uh, because who, who could I have do that? There's nobody else I could trust. You only. Karen. What if I called Karen? I had her do it. <laughs> Karen, do me a favor. What are you doing these days? Come over and dump a bunch of chocolate on me. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I would pick her. Because, because I'm trying to think of who would not be weirded out by it. She might be weirded out by that. You think? She might be weirded about the phone call, period. But yeah. then I'd be like, hey, do me a favor. Stop by and uh, take all of your shit, first of all, and then dump all this hot chocolate all over my head. <laughs> <laughs> dump this huge Dutch oven of melted chocolate on me. Would you do that for me? That'd be great. Um, yeah. See, because I, I, I just, I, I just got to buy it. Because no, everyone keeps telling me to get it. Yes, they, I, I do. No, you don't. <sighs> I just want to see what it what it's like. What if I bought the five pounder? Hear me out. What if I bought the five pounder, split it right down the middle, not lengthwise, like middle wise, and then put peanut butter in the center of it and made a big like five pound chocolate peanut butter sandwich, like a whole jar of Jif, and then melted it. <laughs> Why do I have to melt it? Why am I stuck on melting it? Because I can't eat five pounds by myself. Me and Sage, I need to bring these to the Philippines. <laughs> Those people like chocolate, or as they call it, <laughs> that's their that's their word for chocolate. You didn't know that? Oh my god, no! <sighs> Holy Christ! I found that out because I was like, "Dude, did you know there's a five pound chocolate bar in America?" And they said five pounds a. <sighs> Can't even make that noise without laughing. All right, so, uh, so yeah, it's been a, in a weird week. Because it's Thanksgiving, folks. And I'm, I'm, I won't lie to you. I'm a little weirded out about Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving today. And, I, uh, and I'm, I'm, only, I'm just saying this because it's real. I'm not saying it because I'm like, oh, poor me or boo-hoo. But it's, you know, it's, uh, it's my first Thanksgiving as a fucking sad sack divorced idiot. Ugh. Terrible. And so I don't know what to do today. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do or what I should do. I'm probably just going to sit in my house and do nothing. But then part of me was like, I should cook. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to cook? I mean, I, I, you know, 
because it just smells like Thursday, as we know, and, and it, it smelled like. But this was this was this was like our like because Karen, that's what she loved was Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like she loved the holidays, and I loved them because she loved them. So I would look forward to them um, because then that was we would do you know we would on Thanksgiving we'd binge watch a show because we'd have a bunch of shows. So I don't know what to do today, and I and it's not like. I'm not trying to be like this orphan guy who's like, oh, please call me up. No, I don't, you know, whatever the fuck. You got your life and that's fine. But I, I'm just, I don't know what to do. And because Lily's got hobo Thanksgiving in the afternoon and, uh, and as terrible a turn as my life has taken. <laughs> I just can't see me watching guys in fingerless gloves playing ukuleles in the park. I can't. I can't. Not on purpose. Like if I wandered by and I looked at it like a scance and I was like, oh my God, what's happening here? That would be a different story. But to actually attend it. And also, uh, I would have to make a dish, right? Don't we have to make a covered dish for Hobo Thanksgiving? Doesn't everybody have to bring a dish? What are you bringing? I don't know. You're not sure? You're up in the air? Yeah. Well, tell me so we don't make the same thing. Uh, maybe I'm going to bring tuna fish, I think. Let me ask you this. Were you going to melt a five-pound chocolate bar? No. Hmm. Good, I'm safe. You bring a five-pound chocolate bar to Hobo Thanksgiving. Because somebody else is going to want to eat some. No, I will hover over it like a like fucking golem. Nobody's getting that thing. Yeah, and just fucking eating it. Exactly. Uh, golem ate raw fish. I ate a raw fish. Golem and I are the same. <laughs> golem and I are one. Uh, well, I guess I, I'm actually still in my Smeagol phase. Oh my. But eventually I'll be Golem. Oh my. Um, so, uh, so I don't know what to do on this Thanksgiving day. I, I, um, I'm a little uh, lost. Well, I, you know, I had a big week last week, so I don't really need Thanksgiving because I was always, I didn't care before, like before Karen, BK. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't a holiday dude. I mean, I, I didn't mind the holidays; they were cool, but I, they weren't. They didn't mean to me what they meant to her. And then they, I, you know, I cared about them because she cared about them. Um, so for me, it's just Thursday. That's all it is. I've talked about that before, right? It's just like your birthday. You fuck celebrating your birthday when you get old. Who cares? I mean, and I'm not saying it like, oh, I'm old. I'm just saying like. Because I know people who are just like, oh, man, I can't believe nobody got me a Slurpee today. What the fuck? You're old. Go get your own Slurpee. Well, yeah, but it's my birthday. Ah, shut up. All right. God, <laughs> when, when did this show turn into a crabby asshole? Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I, she's going to go like 2007? Um, <laughs> uh, so, I'm, so when you hear this, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing something important and fun. You know what? I, I have had one extended invitation. because li Well, Lily invited me to Hobo Thanksgiving, and that's a standard invitation, folks. I have that all the time. That's a long-standing invitation. Whenever there's a Hobo Thanksgiving, they expect a Mike Schmidt to show up. Eh, they don't expect it, but they certainly th extend the invitation. But I will say this. Um, our friend Adam, who runs the Westside 86 Jokers page, has sent me an, an invitation to go to his place. He's like he and his uh, lovely girlfriend, who I think might be a fiancé or might not be, if she's listening. I don't know. Um, but they, uh, he said, dude, this is going to seem weird, but we're hosting Thanksgiving and you're more than welcome to attend, which was super cool and really nice of him. Um, and I, I, I can't ever go there obviously because I would know, and I, I wouldn't know anyone but Adam and his lovely fiance who I've had dinner with, or she might not be a fiance. I don't know if she's just a, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't want to get into that, but, uh, see, this is why I can't go. Cause this weird shit will happen. Oh, your lovely fiance. Uh, we're not engaged. Okay. I've just ruined it. Uh, where's a bowl of poi so I can just eat it and hide it under the coats? That's what I want to do because he's Polynesian. I don't know if I've mentioned that. Um, so Adam invited me, but I can't go there because that would be awkward and strange. Uh, I, I, I know Adam, and I certainly know his lovely uh, lady without giving her a title. But then everybody else there will be like, who's this weirdo from the internet? Exactly. And look, we're trending there. <laughs> We are trending there as time goes on. As the young become old, every time you go to a party, you're going to be like, who's this weird guy from the internet? Because all of our friends are from the internet, folks. That's where nobody meets anybody for real anymore. Nobody, nobody has a work friend that like, oh, hey, our cubicles are right next to one another. No, you're, uh, everybody who comes to your Thanksgiving party is like, hey, this is a guy I Skype with from Guam. And you're like, fucking Catholics hate this guy. Um, so so I, I, just, I think I would be a weird uh, person at Adam's party, so I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm lost, folks. I don't know what the fuck to do. Because um, I, you know, I wind up doing stuff alone now, which is interesting, because everybody's got families and friends and things like that. And, I, and not that I don't have friends, but my friends have families. Um, I have a friends and family plan. I'm in nobody's circle, folks. I'm in nobody's 10. What was that, that stupid commercial again? Are you in the 10? I'm not in anybody's 10. I'm barely in anybody's 20. Uh... You know what? That's I shouldn't sell myself short. I'm probably in somebody's twenty, <laughs> and not barely either. I've got to be a solid thirteen in somebody's twenty. Oh my god! <laughs> Poor Lily, Lily, I, 
she is so hip deep in Hollywood Burlesque Festival stuff. And then I come here on Wednesday and just and just <laughs> make her stop doing her life and sit here and listen to me talk in fucking circles. It's the weirdest dynamic <laughs> of all time where she's just like, yeah, this he's coming over again to do that thing that he does. And then I got to go and do my work, my real work. <laughs> That people enjoy, but instead now I have to just sit here and stare at him as he talks in fucking circles about he and Pat Sajak raiding the Philippines. It's just weird. <laughs> uh, so I do things alone. I went to Pearl Jam last week, and I went alone. Um, I bought tickets a, a while ago, and here was the way it worked: is I had to buy, you have to buy two tickets. You can't just buy one if you're in the fan club. And I, you know, I didn't know who the fuck was going to come, so I figured I would just sell it to another guy in the fan club. And I, and and then I was also in my head, I'm like, well, you know, you never know, because I had to buy them like five months ago. So in my head, I'm like, well, you know, maybe you'll meet somebody by then, and you'll want to take them to the show. And I'm like, that's never happening. You're a fucking mess. Who the fuck are you going to bring? Um. So I held on to the ticket for a while, and I talked about it on here that I was on some Pearl Jam singles group on on Facebook. And then a woman was on there and she said, hey, I have two tickets for Sunday if anybody wants to trade a ticket for Saturday, a general admission ticket. And I, w I laughed and made fun of it and then I just did it. I called her and I'm like, yeah, because I'll, I'll, I would rather see both concerts than just go to one. So she was like, cool, let's do that. So, uh, but we weren't, we weren't going to hang out and we weren't going to do anything. It wasn't like we were dating, but we just had to make the ticket exchange. So Saturday I go to the show and, um, you know, all these people, like Pearl Jam, I love Pearl Jam. I, I, I think they're fantastic. They're the best live band in the world, and it's just so amazing to go watch them, and I, I really like their music. But I'm also, I, I'm also a grown person who has real-life problems and things that he has to take care of. So I can't be online going, what do you think Mike McCready thinks about when he dreams? You know what I mean? I'm, I can't be that guy. <laughs> So these people are all doing that, and then they're and then it, because it's a singles group, they all started to kind of talk about boning, and they started talking about sex, and and and, and whatever. Good for you. That's fine. Um. It was all that, that weird thing of like, ha ha, I like fucking, I like fucking too. And then they put up 40 memes about fucking, but then nobody meets one another and nobody fucks. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, dude, let's all just get together for a big ass circle jerk and get this out of our fucking system. Because I, I'm, Lily and I are weird about sex. Like, we're totally different about it. Like, we'll talk about it and we don't care. And, why, you know, I'm, you pull me in. of course I do. I have to rope you in. Why would I not? Uh, well, I'm staring at a naked painting of you. And last week I did a 45 minute show about me jerking <laughs> off and taking photos of it. We're on, I think we're on the same playing field here. Um, but these guys are all posting like memes about fucking and all that. And But then I just want to go, hey, you know what? Fuck these memes. Let's all get together at a party and just go to work. I mean, let's just fucking, let's just, you know, do a crazy Pearl Jam circle jerk and, and make it happen. But I mean, you know, nobody wants to hear that from me ever. Um, <laughs> at least of all Pearl Jam. Oh, my God. They're cer they certainly down on the idea. Um. So, uh, so I go to the show and so she, she's going to, you know, general admission is you're going to be on the barricade and see the band. It's amazing. So we had general admission tickets on Saturday. So I had to get there early to get her the general admission ticket because they let people in at six o'clock. And so she has to run to the barricade. So I didn't want to get there that early because the show didn't start until eight 30, but I didn't care. I had to get there and get her a ticket. And I figured, well, you know, go soak up some conference concert atmosphere. And I, so I wrote her, I'm like, Hey, when did you want to get there? And she says, well, I'm getting there with my friends at 5 a.m. And I was like, Ooh, I'm sorry, what? She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there at 5 a.m. We're going to get right on the barricade. I, I'm not even fucking around. And I said, well, I'm probably not getting there until like 6 p.m. <laughs> and she's like, well, they open the doors at 6. And I go, well, here's the thing. Because she was very nice. Because I told her, I, go, I don't know anything about the rules, but I want to make sure that you get your ticket and you get what you want. Um, so just tell me what I have to do. And she told me the doors open at 6. So I figured I would get down there about 4.30 and get her her ticket and hang out. So that's what I did. I showed up. Um, I meet her. She's very nice. And she's she got there at 5 a.m. She's 26th in line. Jesus. So there are people ahead of her, which I can't, is astonishing to me. This is her 13th, no, her 12th show, Saturday, 13th on Sunday. Um, there's all these people who are there who follow them and see them all over the place. They go all over the country and they follow them and see them because they're, you know, they're like the dead and... They're selling Pearl Jam grilled cheese and micro dots and what the fuck. Good for you. Really micro dots? <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Oh, I'm sorry, dipping dots. It is the ice cream of the future. So I go there and I give her her ticket and she's very nice. And then, you know, I'm not, I don't plan on getting in line with her, obviously, because I, I don't, I don't care that much. And she never offered to, you know, because again, you respect the line. There's people that have been there all fucking day and I'm not going to show up at 430 and cut. Um, 
And I didn't care where I was on the floor. And in fact, I actually tried to trade that general admission ticket for a seat because I'm old. I'm an old person. I got no. I don't want to stand on the floor and 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 go yay Eddie. I mean, I just didn't. So, I walked around the parking lot to kind of just peep at these weirdos. Uh, I'm there joining. I'm an idiot. I'm also a weirdo. <laughs> I'm in the fan club so I can get first choice of tickets, but they're weirdos. Um, and I'm walking through the parking lot. And the good thing about any concert or any event in California uh, is when you are there, you're in line or you're about to go in, there are uh, any number. Uh, there's a small army of Hispanic people who have hand trucks and they're cooking hot dogs on them. Death dogs, they're called. Um, because they, well, what they do is they cook the hot dog on the grill and then they wrap bacon around it and then they cook the bacon on the hot dog and then the rest of the, the whole fucking hot plate cookie sheet is covered with onions sautéing and peppers, hot peppers and onions. And then they, they get a bun and they soak it in the fucking grease from the hot dog and they put the death dog on the bun and then they put ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard and then they cover it in onions and peppers. The death dog and it's fucking delicious. Now, I, you know me, I'm not eating these days or at least much and certainly not like i used to lily's hiding her face because she's going to throw up with me describing the death dog um but it, you it doesn't matter i'm in you know, i'm in all the fucking way so uh so i start walking around and i see them there and i you know it's just that smell fills the air it's just so good it's sauteed onions it's really delicious so i'm like well fuck it i gotta have a death dog while i'm here so i grab a death dog and I and I inhale the motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't savor it. I didn't be like, yay. And I actually, uh, I, I I took a picture of it. I will tell you that. I took a photo of it. I put it on Facebook because I'm like, ah, fucking death dog. If you're going to a concert, you gotta have a death dog. And so I ate that death dog. And then uh, it was still 5:30, and the doors weren't gonna open until six or 6:30. And uh, so I went to my car and I sat in there and I'm waiting. And time's going by and I'm alone again. I'm I'm alone and I, it's it's weird being alone. Certainly being alone at a concert is strange. Uh, but it's also weird because I can't go in and I'm in the parking lot and I'm cold and I'm a, I'm a half a lady. Um, and so now I'm bored, folks, as you know. And it's 5.45 and the doors don't open for 45 minutes and I'm in my car and I'm like, hey, you know what I want? Another death dog. <laughs> so I go over and there was a, a, a nice young lady and she's like, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. And I go, yes, absolutely. And I get no mustard uh, and I shouldn't get mayo. Uh, quite frankly, but I get the no mustard instead. And because I'm like, I'm an experienced death dog, let's do this. Because the first one I ate with everything, then the second one I got no mustard. And I said, Can I have extra onion? They pile it on there. And, uh, and I fucking wolfed that one too. And then I go to get in line as they're letting people in. Um, they let general admission in. I should tell you this too. I had two propels that I smoked, I put in my pants pockets. Uh, they never even patted me down. Like, they didn't even use a metal detector on me or anything. It was like, Yay, go in and have a good time. Dude, I'm on the main floor. I could have taken a fucking pot shot at anybody. Um, so I go in, we get on the main floor and now I, I gotta tell you, this girl had gotten there at 5 AM. She winds up basically second row. She's behind the first row of people who are actually on the barricade. She's behind them. Uh, I got there at, I mean, I walked in the, the, the place at 6 45 PM. Uh, I'm in eighth row. Wow. I, I mean, there, there's, there might be. 200 people ahead of me but the way they're stacked and they're lined up all the way along they're they're i mean it's i i've got a perfect view of the stage a perfect view um except for one thing uh we're all down on the main floor and i'm like six two and directly in front of me there's three dudes that are all six two or taller so i'm like right in front of me these these are the guys i have to strain past i'm like god damn it i'm like well when everything shifts we'll move and i'll try to get ahead of them but then uh ahead of them was a six foot eight guy. And you might say, Mike, why are you estimating him at six foot eight? I'm not estimating. Everybody asked him how tall he was. <laughs> because he's in general admission, they're like, dude, how tall are you? And he's like, six eight. And people would be like, wow, dude, that's awesome. And then he'd turn around and they'd be like, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> and it's the weirdest democracy in action thing I've ever seen because you know what? Pearl Jam fans are all like, dude, we totally love this band and we love Pearl Jam and this is the greatest. Uh, and then one dude is six eight and he's in front of them. They're like, fuck this guy. He's got to go to the back. This guy's got to go to the back. <laughs> well, I thought we were all in this together and Pearl Jam's the greatest. Fuck that guy. Tall people can't like Pearl Jam, certainly not in front of me. So like he went from all of us being in, in it together with this camaraderie we love the band to half the people splitting off and trying to decide how they could fly planes into his legs and bring him down like it was 9-11. I mean, they fucking hated him, hated him. Everybody wanted to Muhammad out of the fuck out of this guy. 
So there was all this shifting and people kept bitching about it. And, uh, and I should tell you this, look, again, I like people. Um, that seems like a strong statement. I don't like people at all, folks. You know when you find out you don't like people? When you're with people. Sitting here with Lily, I'm like, I like people. You know why? Because she's the people I like. <laughs> but if I get into a room with a bunch of strangers, you know who I do not like? People at all. I don't care for people. Certainly not concert going people. And certainly not rabid I love Pearl Jam band people. Because I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, let me just, I'm going to throw this out to the Pearl, the Pearl Jam fans who are listening to the show. No doubt. I'm sure you're out there. Um, nobody cares how many times you've seen the band. Nobody. Nobody at all. <laughs> nobody cares about the version of Corduroy they did that night. Nobody cares about the opening band and how he came out and you didn't care for Nobody cares. No one. No one cares at all. There was a dude next to me, he's like, he was from Missoula, Montana, and he's going on and on about how he's seen the band five times. And, uh, and because it's always this, this is always what happens. He's like, I saw him at the Universal Amphitheater and it was an amazing show. Chris Cornell from Soundgarden came out and I look at him and I go, I was at that show. He goes, yeah, he came out and he did Hungry with the band. It was so great. And I go, yeah, I was at that show. And he goes, yeah. And then the guitarist from Alice in Chains came out. And I go, yes, I was at the show. Jerry Cantrell, he came out and they did a live together. He goes, yeah, it was like, you know, Chris Cornell came out and then Jerry Cantrell was out. We couldn't believe it. None of us in the crowd, we were just looking at each other in disbelief. I was fucking there. I was there. <laughs> Get the fucking cowbell out of your ear, Montana. I was there. I said it 20 fucking times. You and your flask. Oh, man. Just fucking people sipping out of their flasks, talking about their Movember mustaches, and they're wearing their flannel shirts. It's just like, I, in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I like this band, but Jesus Christ, I hope a great white fire happens and kills all of us. I hope it just fucking happens right now. Because none of us deserve to live. Because they're talking about their love of Pearl Jam and the band and Eddie, and Eddie's the coolest, and Eddie's this, and Eddie's, Eddie's a rock star who does not care about you at all. It's okay to like his songs. And maybe he does care about you in the abstract. But if you had Eddie in a party and you cornered him, went, dude, I've seen your band five times. Matter of fact, one time I saw it in Chris Cornell and he'd go, I was there! <laughs> and then he would hope that Jeremy came in and shot you in the fucking head. Oh, harsh. Oh, man. Look, clearly I remember picking on the boy. Seemed a harmless little fuck. Uh, so these guys are just chattering and sipping in flasks, and they're and they're they're just and and the and they're talking to girls. This is the thing; these three dudes are drunk, and they're macking on girls, and the girls are like receptive to it. And, it was just, and then so that makes me even weirded out. I'm like, I I have no chance ever again with another vagina as long as I fucking live because this is what they like. They like the guys in the flannel with the Movember mustaches talking about their, their where they live in San Luis Obispo. Oh God, it was terrible. It was terrible. So more people start coming in. And I should tell you this, by the way, uh, the 6'8 guy, um, he's in front of me, but he was off to the side. So here's what I did during the show. Uh, I took a bunch of photos with him in it on purpose so I could show you. Like, maybe I'll put it up on Facebook. But there's a great, I have these great pictures where it's like, you can see Eddie Vedder clearly on stage. And then this gigantic planet of a head is just like in the foreground. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get the perspective of like, this is the guy in front of me. And there's Eddie Vedder in the, in the, and I'm eighth row. I'm close. But when you see the fucking dark side of the moon on the right hand side of the photograph, you're like, Jesus Christ. Um, so again, I wasn't crazy about standing on the floor, but I don't mind. I'll go to a general admission. And, uh, and as I saw how close I was, it started to get kind of, excited about it um because you know look i've i've worked general admission and i've been on the floor before but not ever to be there for a concert and certainly not for a band that i loved so in my head i'm like well i'm gonna embrace this this might be fun if i could just not listen to any of these motherfuckers and all the shit that they're talking about that'd be fine so i kept trying to check my phone and then all of a sudden the more people come in and this is a phenomenon that happens at all of these events. Uh, the more people that arrive at an event, they all start using their phone, and now you can't get any reception at all. And my phone winds up searching, 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 and it's killing the battery. It was fucking depressing. So I had to put my phone on airplane mode. And I'm there waiting, and we're waiting for the show. And there's no opening band, so everybody's like, oh, they're going to go on at 7.30. But no, if you go online, you know they come out at 8.30, and that's fine. So uh, more people are banging in, and then the, the, you're, you can't move. And I wish to tell you this. People kept trying to move past us. Like I said, I'm in eighth row, and people would walk up, and they're trying to cut in front of us. And we'd look at them like, what are you doing? And they go, well, we're going to go up there. No, you're not. We're all this – is, this is the established order of things. You need to get to the back of the bus, Rosa Parks. And, uh, well, I'm serious because they come wandering up. Like they, and it would be a guy like holding his, his girlfriend's hand, and they, like they were just going to skip to the front and, I don't know, what, get married behind the barricade? What the fuck do you – why are you special? You're nobody. I, I can news for you. 
getting past me, if you're shorter than me, I don't care. I honestly really don't care if you're shorter than me. If you're taller than me, you're not fucking going anywhere. But there are people up front who will cut you. They will absolutely <laughs> fucking murder you because they've been out there since five in the morning. And, and I should tell you this, by the way, folks, um, general admission, uh, all these people have been waiting in line. So they've all been outside all day. And uh, a lot of them like weed. And a lot of them like drinking. And like I said, they have flasks and they're buying beers and they had beers outside. And so it is just this festival of smells on the floor where it is just these people who they because they drink and then they smoke weed and they're sweating because it was kind of warm outside. It was like 75 degrees and they're wearing their flannel and their ponchos. And they, you know, they woke up in the morning to get there by five. I'm sure they didn't shower anyway. So, uh, so it just, it just, it is not pleasant at all. It's, it smells like. Someone opened up a renews it that was called fiery garbage. That's what it smelled like. <laughs> uh, and as you all know, I'm very clean, so I smell terrific. So uh, more people start packing in. We're getting to be like sardines. And finally at 830, the lights go down. The place goes crazy. And uh, these three dudes in front of me, they start passing their flask and they get their arms around each other's necks. They're like, yay, whoopee, we're here to see Pearl Jam. And they're cheering and they're, they're yelling. And the band's not even out yet, but they're, and they're kind of swaying and bumping into people. And, uh, and also, I should tell you about those three guys. Again, they were outside. Um, they, they reek. They, they smell like someone barbecued a shit steak. I mean, it's just <laughs> because, they, because they, they have like a weird, like a campfire smell. Because I guess there was a, they had set a fire in a trash can outside. But when you do that, you're supposed to take the trash out, I think, right? So you don't smell like burnt styrofoam because that's what they smelled like. And also, they just had that funky because they've been out in line all day. You're sweaty. You got swamp ass. It's just fucking nasty. So uh, so they're swaying and they're drinking out of their flask and I'm trying not to bump into them. Uh, I want to mosh them. I want to mosh them and knock them down. I want to mosh against the flow, folks. As you know, I'm like my brother, antisocial. But there's no moshing to be had and I refuse to be the one to start it. If it starts, I will plunge right in, but I will not be the one who starts it. So the band comes out and they just fucking tear into the opening song and it's... uh. By tearing the opening song, by the way, I mean they play the most mellow opening song you've ever heard in your life. Um, they open with three mellow songs in a row, which is awesome because then the crowd is like paying attention and kind of singing and still into it. And then they kick it into high gear and they're fucking, and I'm close. And it's, I, I gotta be honest, I gave myself over to the experience where I was really into it and I wasn't with anybody. I didn't have anybody to share it with, but there was kind of a camaraderie with people on the floor. Uh, and then these three idiots, once they kick into the fourth song, which is kind of like a, a really fast song, uh, these three idiots start jumping up and down with their arms around each other's necks. Now, uh, there were women behind them, so I, of course, because I'm the self-appointed police of everything in the world, um, I put my arm between them and the women to make sure they don't stop on the women or they go, don't fall back into them because I'm trying to be polite. Uh, and the women are like, oh, thank you. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't fucking work here. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It's just this old, it's like, you know, at a stoplight and someone's in the passenger seat and you got to stop fast and you put your arm in front of them. It's just something I do and I've done. Don't, I don't need to do it, but I do it. So I did it for these chicks. And the thing is, their boyfriends are with them. And I'm the one protecting them. Their boyfriends are just like rocking out and like, even flow. I'm like, dudes, you got a girl here. Make sure she doesn't get brained. Um, but I can't. I'm like a mom. It's so stupid. I don't know why. Not even like a mom. I'm like a bouncer. It's what I did. It was I was a bouncer forever. Um, so, uh, so then when the show started, I should tell you this, uh, there was a surge forward. And a, a couple came forward to just start cutting past everybody. And... People were trying to stop them. They go, no, no, we have, a, we have our son with us. We have our son. And they used their 11-year-old boy as like a battering ram to get through everybody and get to the front. And people let them through finally because they, they weren't taking no for an answer. And you were trying to watch the show and they, wouldn't, they just had to get up closer. And they pushed their son through and followed him like make a hole. It was so fucking depressing. Uh, and then another woman came up and she's like, oh, I have a sign. I have to get it to Eddie. And we're like, no, you don't. You don't have to get a sign to Eddie. Yes, I do. It's, I, it's a sign. It's very important. I need to get up there. And again, I don't give a fuck because she's shorter than me. But everybody else is like, no, you can't fucking go anywhere. So they're, and the thing is, you're trying to watch the show, but these little fires are breaking out. It's just it's because everyone's supposed to be having fun, but we're not having fun because people are trying to cut. It's just terrible, but also fun because it was awesome because they were great. The band was great, but terrible. Uh, and then these guys are jumping up and down and I'm standing there. I'm trying to make sure that I watch the, f the show and have a good time. Um, and then the couple that burst through with the, uh, with the 11 year old, they split up. So the, the guy and his 11 year old son are in front of the six, eight guy. And they, uh, they start throwing ice at, at the people up front. And I figured it was because they wouldn't let them go past. 
So they just start lobbing ice and laughing. They're throwing ice while the band is playing. And it's so funny. The second song, or, or the, it was the th third song? Second or third song. Uh, I, I, and it's funny, funny. I would tell you what the songs are, but you don't care. It's like I was going to go into the set list, but nobody's like, that's like the worst ever. As if this isn't the worst ever, but still. Um, but this night on the second song, Eddie Vedder lost his fucking mind. Because there were some people on the pit causing a problem. And he's like, hey, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. He, on the microphone, he's like, no, get him the fuck. Like, it was yeah. he, real emotion and real rage. It was crazy. And he came forward with the guitar to the end of the barricade. And he's pointing. He's like, you, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. And they made security take these two people out. And then they walked past him with me. It was like a 5'6 guy and a 5'6 girl with, like, really long hair. I don't know what the fuck they could have been doing. But they, they fucking, Eddie made sure they got whacked. And then it was so great to see Eddie because he then, the songs end. And when he finally talks to the audience, he's like, hey, who was that we had to throw out? I'm sorry about that. But, uh, you know, if you can't get along with these people, we don't want you here. So I hope you're enjoying the show wherever you're watching it now. Like, he, he turned from the Hulk back into Eddie Vedder and apologized because he really lost his mind. So, uh, so the songs continue and these motherfuckers are throwing ice and people are like pointing at them like why are they throwing ice or whatever and the 6-8 guy is right there and uh, folks I think you know I don't suffer people well at all and I'm already hating it and I'm in the middle of this and there's people jumping and I'm trying to enjoy the show and it just seems like everything is geared toward me not enjoying the show and then these guys are throwing ice and I, I shouldn't care I shouldn't care right uh, but he's throwing ice and so uh, uh, I grabbed him by the neck I reached forward and I grabbed him by the fucking scruff of the neck and I pulled him backwards. He's only like five, six. And he's like, whoa. And he looks at me and I go, quit throwing fucking ice. And his son looks at me with the scared face because his dad is about to get murdered. And, uh, and he just goes, chill out, bro. And I go, quit throwing fucking ice. He goes, it's my wife, man. I'm throwing it at her. It's funny. And I go, it's not funny. And you're not hitting your wife with every fucking ice cube. Fucking stop throwing ice. Uh, and meanwhile, the band kicks into another song, and in my head I go, you don't work here. What the fuck do you care? Stay out of it. Let the people getting hit with ice defend themselves. You're not the arbiter of the floor. <laughs> so then I let go of the guy, and he's just he's staring me down. He's like, hey, fucking chill out, bro, man. You want me to fucking come back there? And I'm like, yes, come back here, please, by all means. Let's fight during Pearl Jam. God damn it. Uh, and finally his son like grabs him, and they huddle, and then they look, and then he continues to throw ice. Uh, and then I'm sitting there and I'm just like, and, and it's, as much as I wanted to enjoy the concert, I was, I, I loved it. They were great. They were fucking amazing. Um, but I, I'm trying to turn my brain off cause I, I, I'm trying not to notice the shit that's going on and just focus on the band. And I did and finally got myself into the band mode. So I filmed stuff. I, I took some videos. I took some pictures. I'm having a great time until about two hours into the show. Uh, again, it's general admission, so I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. And uh, two death dogs decide they're going to have a fight in my stomach. Oh. Like, uh, they start do -si doing pretty good. Like, they're going at it. And, uh, and uh, look, death dogs enjoy going to concerts. But there's a reason they keep them outside the building. Because it turns out death dogs do not care so much for loud music. And they certainly don't care for being jostled in a pit. Uh, death dogs are not a fan of the concert experience. They're a fan of the, uh, the outside experience. So when I brought them in, that exposed them to an element that they weren't crazy about. So these two death dogs decided, you know what? We're getting out of here. Uh, what's left of my stomach was doing flip-flops. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, and I didn't want to leave. And also, because I, I'll be honest with you, um, the last thing I'm ever going to do in my life, and I mean this seriously, because if it ever happens, it will truly be the last act of my life in that I will then kill myself shortly thereafter. The last thing I'm ever going to do is shit in a concert bathroom. Um, because it is full of the people I hate. And then I, I'm involved in an activity that I hate. And then they're going to make fun of it. And it's just it's just a thing where I don't want to be involved at all. And, and look, you should never shit in a public place ever, ever. If you do, you're an animal. It, clearly, you are an animal. If, unless it's an emergency. Unless you think you're going to die, there's no reason to shit in a public place. And die. Absolutely, that's the move. Because um, I'm in the middle of the floor. And, uh, and I know, and in my head, I'm like, all right, this is, this is bad. Like, you can always tell the difference, all right? Sometimes you can get a little gastrointestinal distress, and you're like, well, you know, I can live with this. But, uh, but it felt like two midgets were fighting in my stomach, and they were just slugging it out. And, the, and they were also pushing off of my kidneys to have at each other in the center of my whatever's left of my fucking horrible, torn-apart gut. And, uh, 
And you know what? Probably if I had one death dog, I think I would have been fine because I can handle that, folks. One death dog, I'm a grown person. I can do it. And when Fat Mike, oh my God, he could pound like fucking 30 of them. Uh, this is the year Fat Mike beats the stomach. But now I have one and it's questionable. But you eat two. And again, you're introducing the death dog's natural enemy into that habitat, another death dog. And they're going to fight it out for the territory. Because again, my stomach's been turned into a coin purse. There's not a lot of room in there. So the two of them are just trying to coexist. It's like a prison cell. They've been put in a goddamn food jail and they want to break the fuck out. So, I mean, it starts getting bad. Like my stomach's kind of, and it's, and it's this intense pain, which we've all had, but, uh, I'm here to tell you mine is worse. Mine is worse than anything you've ever had. And I'm sure all of you think the same thing, but when you're going through it, you're just like, this is terrible. So, uh, so I have no choice, man. I'm in the middle of the general admission floor and, uh, and I have to leave and I'm going to have to shit in the Los Angeles sports arena, which I don't want to do unless somehow I can charm my way past the security guard and shit in Pearl Jam's dressing room. Cause I imagine it's very nice. I imagine it's very nice. And I would, I would actually do that. Even if the band hated me from that moment on, I would do it because it meant that I didn't have to go do it somewhere else. But I know that I'm not gonna be able to charm my way past. And then part of me is like, you know what? Uh, I'm fine. I think I'm going to be fine. And then I would say I was fine. And I would get this pain uh, behind my kidneys that would shoot up through my back. Not not even like lower back, like up into my shoulder blades. Like, dude, you've got to do something about this. Like my body was just on this high alert. And uh, and we've all had that. Like um, guys will know what I'm talking about if I say this. Uh, I'm standing there clenched and I'm trying not to move. And people are swaying and they're bumping into me. And I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. But it feels like someone is squeezing my balls. Like it's like that weird, you could feel it in your throat. I mean, I just felt... <sighs> awful and in my head i'm like i'm going to have to shit in the los angeles sports arena but at the same time i'm in general admission so if i leave i give up my hard-fought spot in the eighth row and look i might not like the people that are around me but i'm enjoying the show i'm fucking loving it and i want to see what's going to happen i don't want to miss anything to go to the fucking bathroom and then fight my way to the front because again people try to get past me and i held them off well now i'm going to try to get to the front it's going to turn into a mess i don't want to deal with any of these people i'm going to stand right here i'm rooted to the spot i'm i'm here i'm standing my ground folks i'm george zimmerman the fuck out of this concert i'm not going anywhere i'm standing my fucking ground this place is florida and i'm standing my ground so in my head i'm like well dude You can't stand your ground. You got to get the fuck out of here. You got to go and use the bathroom. You got to do something because I was in pain. My eyes hurt. My eyes actually hurt. And so in my head, I went, you know what? I'm going home. That's it. I'm I'm because I can't shit there. I'm like, I'm going to head home. I have to drive home. But I'm like, I'll never make it home from from the sports arena to my house. It's not going to work. So I'm standing there and I have to make a decision. Am I going to shit in the sports arena or am I going to get my car and go home? Or is it time to gamble? We've all faced that decision, folks. Maybe we haven't. Maybe I'm the only one who has. I don't want to bring you into my nonsense. But uh, but it's it's time. It's time. It's time to make a decision. It's time to either get in the car and race home. It's time to shit in an awful bathroom at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Or you can gamble right there on the floor and see what happens. And I will admit, this flashed through my head. Uh, if I gamble on the floor and I lose... Well, I've got a story to tell you guys. <laughs> so that cushioned the blow for me a little bit. That that opened up the uh, the drawbridge a little bit. That was able to, that was going to make me cross the moat that much more because in my head I'm like I can't I can't shit my pants at a Pearl Jam show. And my favorite part about that is the qualifier of at a Pearl Jam show, as if shitting my pants anywhere else would be preferable. <laughs> Look, I can shit my pants at the Grove. But I can't shit my pants at a Pearl Jam show. So, uh, so I'm standing there. And in my head, I, I'm not kidding. All of you emboldened me into making this gambling move. All of you made me think, you know what? This isn't so bad because if I do gamble and lose, I've got a story. Uh, so I'm there. I'm in the floor. There's idiots with their arms around each other, sipping a flask, jumping up and down next to me still. Two hours in, two hours and 15 minutes in. We've already been through like one encore. And the band is sitting down now. They're on stools. They're, they're like relaxing. And I see that and it looks so relaxing. I'm like, oh, I wish I could sit down. I wish I could do something, anything without moving or getting bumped into. Um, but I glance around. And uh, there are people directly behind me. 
okay? And uh, there's women directly behind me. And, uh, and I, I, in my head, even, I, look, there's a concert going on. Nobody's going to hear anything. Oh, oh, what the? But at the same time, I'm like, these people are right behind me, and this is rude. It's not very nice. So, uh, so I do this, thinking it would be inconspicuous, but honestly, there couldn't have been anything more conspicuous in the world. Uh, I turned my back on the band. <laughs> I was facing the crowd, and I'm like, I can't gamble with these people behind me, because who the fuck knows what's going to happen. So uh, if I gamble, I'm going to turn around and gamble, so then I will have to turn into the stench. I will have to be the one who turns and then I will have to make a hasty retreat. Whatever the fuck happens, happens. But if I gamble and win, uh, I can't do it with the people directly behind me. So I have to turn around and do it in the spot where I'm occupying. So then I will have to turn around and I will have to deal with it. So I literally turn my back on the band. Softly, slowly, I shuffle my feet back and forth because any sudden movement and I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. So I, uh, I turn around. The band is on. Uh, there's playing on stage. I turn my back to the band. And uh, I thought I was going to be giving a break to the people behind me by doing this, you know, gambling not in their face. But uh, when I turn around, they're, they look right at me. They're looking in my eyes like, why are you turning around to look at us? Why aren't you watching the band? Uh, and I can't go, well, because I'm having an emergency and I'm about to gamble and I don't want to gamble right in your face because that would just be polite. Because, again, they should know that I'm being polite. I'm thinking of them for fuck's sake. You've heard a fucking show and somebody turns around and faces you? Know that they want to give you the courtesy of not making you the brunt of their attack. So, uh, but these people did not know that at the time. And I turned around and I faced them. And I'm looking, I'm looking at them, hoping that I get... And so then they're looking directly in my face and I look past them. Like I do a thousand yard stare uh, off into the crowd to pretend like I'm looking at the crowd. And uh, here's what I do to cover my tracks here, folks. Uh, before the gambling itself, I turn around. I'm facing the people behind me. And uh, I get my phone out of my pocket to take a photo of the crowd behind me. Pretending like I wanted a photo of the magnanimous size of the group at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. When in reality, I'm just turning around praying I don't shit my pants. So uh, I take the camera and I position it. And I go to take a photo because I think it makes it look like that I'm actually doing something constructive. And, uh, and I just fucking gamble and I let loose. And I gamble. And I win. Oh, not really. <laughs> Maybe not really. Um, well, let's put it this way. I gamble and win in that I don't shit my pants. However, uh, I gamble and win because um, I unleash a jet engine of hot air uh, that climbs right up the back of six foot eight to the point where uh, I, he had to know what was happening. He, he had to think that I had somehow grown six inches and was breathing on his neck. Uh, but I'm taking a picture. I'm like taking pictures the whole time. And it's like it went on. I mean, it went for. 15 seconds. I'm in 15 seconds. And I get to be honest with you, the greatest 15 seconds of my life. <laughs> I felt amazing. Uh, but also, I, I should tell you this, uh, there's a band playing. I heard it. I heard it. I didn't just feel it. It was happening. I heard it. Now, if I hear it, clearly, other people had to hear it, right? Uh, no, of course not. They're listening to the band. There's no way they could have heard it. So uh, I finish about a minute later. <laughs> and then I turn around to watch the band again with like this, I mean, this incredible relief because I won. I gambled and I fucking won. The, I, I can't tell you how exuberant I was. I was just in my head. I was like, I was flying, flying. So happy. I was given to fly. Uh, until... <laughs> Until a shit fist punched me right in the face. Uh, because uh, here's the thing, folks. I was aiming downward, so it was, it was sh everything was shooting downward. And then when I turned around, it got caught in the updraft of people moving. And it, uh, and it enveloped us. That's the only word I can use. It enveloped us. The stench. I don't know what came out of me. I don't know what's in Death Dogs on the inside. I mean, I, I know on the outside it's onions and peppers and bacon and pork and greasy hot dog bun. 
but but for some reason when you put it in your body the composition of it interacts with your physical being to somehow create the worst fucking thing that's ever happened in your life uh, and I had two of them. I had fucking two of them. So, I mean, I just had this two-fisted, two-pronged attack of death coming out of my colon in front of everybody. And I just, I, it just, I turned around and it hit me in the face and I went, oh my God, that smells like Jeffrey Dahmer's living room. What the fuck just happened? It, it smelled like someone poured milk into a litter box. Oh my Christ. And I looked around at the band and I'm like yay the band and yay I'm okay and I smelled it and I, ma- I probably made a face like I think a tear came out of my face where I was like oh that's me probably that's me um but I got away with it I gambled and I won and I didn't have to worry about it so I was like good I'm fine I'm healthy I don't have to get in my house and fly home and have to shit here and then uh it wouldn't go away Like, I, I don't know what it was that came out of me, but it was it was heavier than air because it wouldn't dissipate. It wouldn't fucking go anywhere. And it just kind of hung out by me and then sort of drifted around. And I could see everybody. All of a sudden, everybody made this face where they, it hit everyone. Everyone knew. Everyone knew. Because I, I, all of a sudden, I glanced around. And that was the mistake I made, was glancing around. If I didn't look around, if I would have just been like, oh, this is horrible, that would have been fine. But instead, I glanced around, and everybody all of a sudden caught it at once. And it, was, it started creeping down. Death. Metallica has a song called Creeping Death. It was creeping death all over the audience. And everybody, you could see them just kind of go, oh, and make a face and look around and look at one another. And then they all looked at me. They all looked at me because I was the only fat guy and I was alone and I was looking around and that was the problem. But I shouldn't have fucking glanced around because once I made eye contact, I'm sure I made like a sheepish face like, yeah, that might have been me. And that was it because everyone looked at me and they were just like, holy shit, this smells like Frankenstein's balls. What the fuck happened to you? <laughs> Because remember I said everybody stunk, they waited in line, and they all smelled, and they all fucking booze and weed. It smelled like I ate everybody. I went down the line, I ate everybody and their booze and their weed and their nasty fucking lawn chairs and their horrible fucking patchouli uh, faces, and, and it smells like I ate them, and I shit them out right there on the goddamn main floor. It was awful. And everybody knew it was me. Everybody. And they're looking at me, and I'm just standing there, and I'm just like, Jeremy Spoken. <laughs> Class today. Oh my gosh. Why go home? Why go home? I should have gone home. I should have gone home and done this. That's what I should have done because everybody. <laughs> and my favorite part is I'm on the main floor, so I can only see like the people at my face level. I wish I'd have been up in the stands because you can see everybody, and I would have just seen it like spread out like when a nuclear bomb just destroys trees you could have seen it like the ground zero of me and then everybody's gonna go what 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 and turning around and make bonding and looking at one another, and they all looked at me in the center of it i was the goddamn i was the eye of the shit cane <laughs> it was so bad pat zajac pulled up in a van and gave me relief supplies that's how bad it was <laughs> And though I enjoyed the rest of the show, I still got fish eyes from everybody. And then the lights came up and I was the fart guy. I was the fart guy. (laughs) To the point where people even looking at me and just like, yeah, it was him. Like they said it out loud. Yeah, that was him. It was him. And uh, even the fucking guy who had like his 11 year old is looking at me with this this day. And I'm like, you were throwing ice at people. He was throwing ice at people. Who cares? You ruined the whole fucking end of the show. God damn it. And I'd like to say I walked out with my head held high. Uh, but I didn't. (laughs) Instead, I hopped on a hovering shit cloud and floated to my car like Jafar. I was a shit genie, and I had granted everybody an anti-wish. And I got in the car and I laughed. I'm telling you, I laughed the entire fucking way home. I was just like, dude, that was fucking hysterical. Hysterical. Awful, but hysterical. Because it was finally over so I could laugh. And then I went to the show on Sunday. <laughs> and I parked. And uh, I had to meet the girl who had the ticket. And uh, as I'm walking through the crowd, there are, because they have uh, people who see their shows many times. And uh, I walk through and people are looking at me. Like they're, like they can recognize me. <laughs> From a fart the night before. (laughs) That's the impression I made. And I could feel their eyes upon me. 
and they glared and they glanced and I knew, I knew that every time they went on the main floor, any other Pearl Jam show that they attended, they would be like, dude, this is my 16th show, but oh my God, my eighth show. <laughs> and from now on, I was going to be the cautionary tale that people told about when they went to a Pearl Jam show. I was going to be an anecdote. I was now an anecdote. I'm a 10 club anecdote for the rest of my life. I'm the guy who fucked up the end of the first show in Los Angeles on the lightning bolt tour. And I didn't care. I walked through and people looked at me and I went to go pick my ticket from this girl. And as I was making my way through the crowd, I texted her and she's like, I'm almost there. I'll be there soon. And when I walked through the crowd, people were staring at me and I would just nod and smile and I didn't fucking care. And then uh, I got to the front of the gate and there was a small army of Hispanic people preparing death dogs. No. And I looked around and I could see people even looked at me with caution in their eyes. And I fished out my wallet and a $5 bill and I said, one, please. <laughs> you guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt comedy dot com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can find our friend David Hernandez on Facebook at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. If you'd like to talk to him about doing some artwork for you, you can go to artbydmh.com, A R T B Y D M H dot com. Uh, you can find our friend Lily Von Stupp at several Twitter accounts Twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, Twitter.com slash MNTs, and Twitter.com slash Hollywood BQ Fest. You can be your friend at Facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp, but if you'd like to write her a personal note and request a visit where she will shove her feet into your mouth instead of mine, oh, no. you can write her at Lily at Burlesque411.com. That's Lily, L-I-L-I, -I, at Burlesque411.com. You haven't bought the big angry Not yet Buy it at your business Look at that kick-ass art for sale Tweaked audio just cannot fail Buy it at your business Hey, the Schmitty comes alive He might rap or buy you one through Joe five business. Joe, oh, you dirt, dirt Buy it at your business I want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Santa Monica and Vine. Uh, I happen to know the producer of that show. She does a wonderful job, and she has lovely feet. And uh, I see her naked every Wednesday, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, and by the way, I do not have a photo of you naked in my phone. I don't have that. I know you were, because <laughs> we, uh, when we stopped down at one point, she looked at me, and she's like, you have a naked photo of me in your phone? No, I don't. I will tell you on the air, I do not have a naked photo of you I in my phone. Right no, now. absolutely not. Why would I have a naked photo of you? I would not do that to you. I, if you took the photo, you probably still have it. Mm hmm. If I took the photo. You did, I'm sure. Hmm. Listen, I have plenty of naked photos. You're not one of them. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> sure. Um, they're all me. All right, so. I believe Of that. course they are. I look forward um, to getting an email later. Oh, you can't wait. You get a fax. Um, exactly. Lily Von Stupp is the producer of the Monday Night Tees. It's a great show. She's a great producer. It's an amazing time. Uh, how was this week's... Oh, first of all, hi, Lily. How are you? I am great. How was this week's tease? It was wonderful. I wanted to come. It was the Betty Page uh, extravaganza. Yeah. And unfortunately, I could not make my way over there because it's been a whirlwind week. I don't know if you've heard. I heard. Okay. Um, and how were the Pages? How were the Bettys? They were amazing. Yes? Yeah. And uh, this was to promote the film... And they've been doing all sorts of parties and shows and stuff. And so we had four Bettys dancing and me hosting as Bondage Betty. Nice. Yeah, it was really fun. Sounds good. And then there's a Monday Night Tease coming up this week. No. Because it's dark. Kurt is a private party. Show. Oh, it is a private show. So, folks, you cannot come to the Monday Night Tease this Sorry week. About that. But on the 9th, 
If you have tickets from the Hollywood Burlesque Festival, you can come to the closing party on December 9th. Or you can buy tickets. There or, are some tickets just for Sunday or Monday night available. Did not know that. So uh, that's the Hollywood Burlesque Festival. That is coming up on the 7th, 8th, and 9th. 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th? 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th here in Hollywood. And it is crunch time, folks. And I, I am privy to be here when uh, when Lily gets flyers. She gets programs. Program. Uh, she's wearing T-shirts. Everything is gorgeous. And she's putting so much effort into this. It is an amazing effort. Uh, it is an undertaking that I, I could not do, quite frankly. I have enough trouble putting up a show where I show up and talk. She's juggling, like, 60 performers, four nights. 100 performers. I'm sorry, it's 100 yeah. performers. Four nights, 100 performers. Yeah. Uh, venues and merchandise and insurance and uh, all sorts of incredible things. She is juggling them. And uh, well, I'm serious. You you are doing all of it. It is the weirdest thing when I come here, and it's she's just uh, she's on her last nerve at all times. And I know that this is going to be a great success because she has put so much work into it. it be. <laughs> it's going to be the best. So tickets are available now at brownpapertickets.com for all of the Monday night teases that are coming up. But tickets are also available for the Hollywood Burlesque Festival. If you search Lily Von Stupp or you search Hollywood Burlesque Festival or Monday Night Tease, you can go ahead and get tickets for this at brownpapertickets.com. Send me an email. Uh, you can send an email to Lily. Everything she will direct you is. everywhere. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, you know how in the old days you have to wait out line for concert tickets? Now there's just a long email line to talk to Lily, and she has to read them all and go, I sent this, I sent this, I sent this. Um... But yeah, if you, and if you go to Facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees, you can join that page and get all the information about the teases that are coming up. And Facebook.com slash Hollywood Burlesque Festival, you'll get all the information about who's going to be where and when and the dates and all that stuff. Still buy tickets through BombPaperTickets.com. And uh, also you can go to, um, what is the Hollywood, Be Hollywood Burlesque Festival.com. Yeah. Yeah, for all the information about that. So performers and times and venues and things like that. So uh, go. I will be there. I think I'm going to be there certainly one night, maybe two nights. I don't know if I'll be at the Monday night. But I'm, uh, I don't have a work schedule. Who cares? But I know I will be there on the Friday, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but you don't know, you're not there to see me. You're there to see hot naked girls and our friend Lily. That is not true. My friend Tom, who listens to the show now, is yes. a, a regular at Monday Night Tees. Mm. He said, can we arrange some sort of West Side 86 Jokers meetup? For, uh, for uh, the, the fans of the 40-year-old boy before the show. That's super nice if anybody wants to do that. If you want to come to the show, buy tickets, write me, write Lily and say that, and we will figure out a way to seat you together uh, or do something. Any of the nights you're going to be there. I will be there on the Friday. What night is Dizzy here? I'll be there to see Dizzy. So uh, I'll come out, and that'll be fun. And then uh, if you guys want to come out, contact Lily, buy tickets. It'll be a great time, and I hope to meet or see you there. And then afterwards, we'll all go to Toy and find out it's closed. No, we'll go to three clubs after the show because we're having an after party. Guys. On Friday? On Friday. Holy shit, we'll go to the three clubs and have the after party. And There's a taco truck over there. We'll all go over there and, yep. you know, and have fun. So that'll be a good time. So if you want to do that, contact Lily, buy some tickets. Most importantly... Buy tickets for any night that you can come out because she has put so much work into this. It's going to be a huge success, and we want you to be a part of it. The performers are just friggin' amazing. It's ridiculous, yeah. honestly. And uh, Pearl Lux? Yeah, she's competing. Is she? Now, did I see her and, and kind of lose my mind a little bit? A little. Yeah, yeah, She's on her toes, right? She did the barrel or anything? Yeah. Oh, boy. You, you missed her act this Monday, too, that was just gorgeous. <sighs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, so go see Pearl Lux, and, and do, don't be like Mike. Don't be a goofus like Mike. Be a gallant like you and go see the show. It's going to be amazing. Buy tickets for the Hollywood Burlesque Festival. You can go to Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy and be my friend. Uh, and also while you're there, you can join the West Side 86 Jokers page. I think I mentioned earlier uh, there was a controversy over the 700th member and all the other people who joined. Uh, I will contact you via Facebook and figure out what I can do to make this right. Um, and incentive. maybe you'll all get a Schmitty Comes Alive, or maybe you already have it. Who knows? I have no idea. We will figure something out, but thank you so much for joining the, uh, the West Side 86 Jokers. It's worth it to join just for the new banner painting that Mex made that went over the top. So, uh, so go ahead and check that out. Join the club. We'd love to have you, uh, and then you can be involved in a future meetup for Naked Ladies, because our friend Tom has apparently decided that that's a good idea, and I'm with him. I am with him. Um, follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy go to mikeschmidtcomedy.com and go to the Joe Business page for all of the Mike Schmidt merchandise that is available now for Christmas <laughs> or year round but Christmas is here so we'll use that as a goofy excuse uh, first I will tell you that if you're going to do any Christmas shopping go through our Amazon link and buy stuff through uh, buy Amazon stuff but using my link so that I get credit for it and it works out great you're supporting the show that way we certainly appreciate it very much I know a lot of you already have and that's great I get the reports all the time so go to Joe Business uh, the Joe Business page on MikeSchmidtComedy.com click the Amazon pennant and then go do all of your Christmas shopping via Amazon through me 
TweakedAudio.com slash 40 has always supported this show. Go to their site and pick up autoerotic asphyxiation earbuds and cockering watches. Those are perfect for Christmas. Very festive. Uh, and also they have plenty of gear. So go ahead and check out TweakedAudio.com slash 40. Um, artwork is for sale on the website. Autographed artwork, autographed by the artist, David Hernandez, as well as myself and Lily Von Stupp. Uh, right now there are two orders that are out uh, that are going to be sent to me from David. Uh, I'm excited about that, so thank you very much, uh, folks, for stepping up and ordering artwork. So watch your mailboxes. It'll go out very quickly. Um, CD, The Big Angry, is available. It's available uh, in Amazon or it's available in iTunes. Uh, but you can get more bang from your buck by buying it through me on the website because I will sign it and I will personalize it for you. That's $15 on my website. Go ahead and buy The Big Angry through me there. Uh, and again, be an amazing Christmas gift for people you hate. <laughs> if you don't like them, buy me my buy them my CD. Um, T-shirts, the Yurt Dirt Dirt shirt is available. And uh, I, also, if you have any interest in an older shirt, I have those too. I keep talking and threatening that I'm going to list those, but I really it's honestly silly because there's like 12 different styles. So if you remember a style that you liked that I actually have, because I only have like two shirts in 12 different styles. It's the funniest thing because you know you buy x amount and you sell a ton of them but then there's like a couple and i keep wanting to bring them on the road and go hey but then it's like a fucking rummage sale and it's like hey buy my past it's just silly buy my past it's ridiculous what the fuck on ebay as a limited you know last time buy chance buy thing you're very smart that's exactly what i should do yeah okay i will and do that just list it over and take a picture put it on ebay and list it in the user group that's a good plan yeah i think i'll do that yeah, cool. I'll make an eBay, uh, uh, like a 40-year-old boy eBay yeah. store. I'll become a seller. Oh, yeah. God, I'm a seller on eBay? Oh, what happened to me? All right, I'll do that. <laughs> I did, man. My ass used to be beautiful. No, I'm selling fucking shirts on eBay. Jesus Christ. Um, grown up. Yeah, sure I am. Oh, yeah, that's what grown-ups do is they sell shirts on eBay. Hey, buy a shirt with cartoon me on it. Um, so, yeah, I'll look into that. I'll try to figure that out. Maybe that'll be a, a thing I'll do soon. Maybe. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. It's not like I have anything else going on. Or today, I mean. Thanksgiving. All right. So, um, so year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five of this podcast are available individually or as part of the UN of Evil box set. You can get those there on the website. Go ahead and buy those individually or together. You can buy the Schmitty Comes Alive download. You can buy the For the Life of Schmitty download, uh, the CD, the artwork, the tweakedaudio.com slash 40. There is just a cottage industry of merchandise available at Joe Business on the MikeSchmidtComedy.com website. So go ahead and check that out. Please buy something. I'll ship it. We'll all have fun and be friends. And now Thanksgiving starts. <laughs> I, I guess it already started for you guys, but now it starts for me because it's Wednesday night. I got to take off. And uh, I'm going to do all the things that I used to do. Like I'm going to go to the grocery store and fill a cart with food, but then not buy it. I'm just going to park it and leave it. So they'll, they'll, they'll think it's overstock. Because um, I don't, I like, I, I'm torn, man. Like I want, you know what? I just want to make stuffing. I just want to make like a huge, like a. But I mean, I'll have to make instant stuffing because I can't make like regular stuffing. Like Karen could make good stuffing. I'll have to make boxes of stuffing. Boxes? Why multiple boxes? Why, you know what? I'm gonna make a bathtub full of stuffing. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fill my bathtub with croutons and hot water, and I'm gonna sit in it, and marinate in it. It's gonna be fucking fantastic. And then at the end, I'm gonna pour a fucking five pound. I'm nobody. I'm baloney in pants. God damn it. Why do I think I'm somebody special? Why do I think I'm anybody interesting? I'm not. All I bring to the table is everything that everybody else does, but louder. <laughs> Don't hit snooze on me, motherfucker. I am a hilarious noise machine. I'm going to tell you this. You need to sit down and reevaluate your life if you can pull two midget Indian wrestlers out of your skull at any time. You know what? I don't even need you people here. Seriously, I do this. I love me. I don't give a fuck what you think, how you think. 
God damn it, I'm the greatest. I can't go for Schmidt. No, 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 can do. 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 No, can do.